Rugby is a very accepting sport. I wasn't embarrassed about my body or anything. People really welcome you and actually like take your uh, strengths and weaknesses and work with you to like make you a better person and player. You hit each other and then you're friends. Yeah. 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 Um, I really like the camaraderie of it and like the game is just so physical and it's fun. Definitely try it. Like you. Maybe you don't think you're the strongest, but once you go out and like you hit someone, that adrenaline is so amazing. What got you into rugby? So I was like fouling out in all my basketball games, so I was like, <laughs> why not try rugby out? <laughs> In the hands of everybody. In our game, we play with our hearts. We don't play with sticks, bats, or gloves. We don't wear shoulder pads or helmets. We keep playing when it hurts. And we leave everything on the field. What we wear must be built for our day. Tell me about your experience with RCT so far. Well, I think uh, my experience can be best uh, described as really fun and community bonding because I meet so many new people playing a sport I love. I play, I wrestle and I play football and there's nothing like rugby. You know? Yeah, everybody that I've ever met that tries rugby, just comes to one practice, has ended up liking it. And I asked her like what it was and she said like full contact, like same rules, guys and girls, and I didn't believe her. And then she was like, oh, come out to our practices. And I did, and I was like, oh yeah, I want to play. And then I started playing, and it was really fun. Just, oh no, it's just a game that I love. It's pretty fun though, I don't know, I just love everything about it. It's the laid back atmosphere of it. We'll all be friends on the field and off the field. Uh, just the bond and the vibe from everybody is nice and builds, builds like a lot of character. You should play it. Play rugby. That's it. <laughs> Like how we even like beat of each other in the game, but then we like come together after and we're just like shake hands. And... Well, well, what do you think that is? Why is that? I, I personally think it's like, it's just, we're all one community, like it's one family. You all play rugby, it's just one family. It's a sport. Yeah. Because yeah, if you have to have respect for the person who will for you because you work hard and they have to work just as hard as you do. So you say that respect is probably the greatest value you can gain out of this game? By far. Yeah. By far. And a good morning to you rugby fans. Welcome to Madison, Wisconsin. It is the high school girls rugby single school championship day here. Good day yesterday rugby games. We're going to finish it all up today in Cottage Grove, Wisconsin, just outside of Madison at the Madison United Rugby Complex, a beautiful complex. I am John Broker, joined by Darian Lovelace here on the Rugby Network, bringing you all the action today. Darian, great games coming up. Lots of good rugby to look forward to. 
such exciting stuff here in Madison, Wisconsin. Keep an eye out for the grassroots level of rugby, starting here with the high school girls championship. We saw yesterday and throughout the weekend being able to see players really develop and showcase their athletic capabilities. It's going to be some really exciting stuff here. Keep an eye out for massive runs, big hits. I'm just really excited, John. It's going to be a really fun day of rugby. All right, first up now, it is 8.30 Central, 9.30 Eastern, seventh place game between City Honors and Granville. Following that is going to be Eagle versus Hamilton, a team out of Idaho, taking another team from Wisconsin. Third place game at noon Eastern, 11 Central. It's gonna be Catholic Memorial versus Columbia Central from Tennessee. And then the big championship we're all looking forward to at 1.30 Eastern, 12.30 Central, Divine Savior, Holy Angels, versus Rocky Mountain. We'll have an award ceremony after that. It's going to be a great day of rugby. As you see, City Honors getting warmed up right there and ready to go out of Buffalo. Here in Cottage Grove, Wisconsin, we are almost ready to kick off this exciting day. Between these two teams who are battled their way here and another team getting themselves a little pumped up there. They seem to be ready to go. The pump-up is arguably the most important. The pump-up is arguably the most important part of the whole entire tournament is when before you go into go into the game. So you can already feel the energy really starting to brew here early on. You know, the team just getting pumped up. Very similar warm-ups here, but we'll be ready to go in just a second numbers on the jerseys there that is Granville what you'll see is similar jerseys but uh, City Honors is wearing red socks it might help you out to figure out who is who in this game since they look just a bit similar referee getting us ready to go here at this beautiful rugby complex run by Brad Dufek these days former assistant coach at Quinnipiac University at one of the Naira teams and at Yale University now in Wisconsin getting this amazing complex on the map with events like this, the Girls High School Rugby National Tournament. We are ready to kick off, and it's going to be Granville, the Bulldogs, to kick off to City Honors from Buffalo. Granville, of course, from Michigan. We're just about to get underway in our first matchup, the seventh place game here. Stay with us all day as the matches will continue to build. Referee just counting out the numbers, making sure everybody's good to go. We are about to kick off. It will be Chase Barksdale. Who puts us out? She's a U19 Thunderbird. Gets us underway for the opening kick here. Rolls deep into City Honors area. Five meters out. Gonna have to look for a little exit here. Good defense from the Bulldogs. Moving the ball away. Quickly there is Allison Barr. She's a rookie, also an amateur boxer. Watch what you say to her. Ball comes back. Well set by City Honors. City Honors. From inside their own zone, looking to run this. Granville putting the pressure on here. Marla Amond in there. Kick just looking to get out, but winds up in the hand of Rachel Wilkie. Rachel Wilkie turns. Rachel Wilkie is outside the five. Rachel Wilkie shakes off a couple. And the number 10 and a senior is going to go to Davenport University. Scores the opening try here for the Granville Bulldogs. And Black, make sure we're not really showcasing why she has chosen to be a collegiate athlete. What an accomplishment for her, but it's the quick recognition of space and getting points on the board here early for Granville. That might be the determining factor for this game. Amazing stuff, though, to be able to see a player get recruited out of high school and be able to work their way up to such a such an amazing program such as Davenport. Keep an eye out for her. She'll probably be all over the place, making sure that She's distributing the ball, but plot twist, she can also attack the line and score. So keep an eye out for the Granville number 10. And Rachel Wilkie opens it up there. The co-captains on this team. I'm here, a minute and 45 going already on the board is Granville. They'll be pleased with that start. This is Barksdale, we're gonna talk about her before. We play throughout the forwards. Slots that one, seven nil, good start there for Granville. 
Bulldogs up early. You can hear the fans also up early oh, in the, the stands there, enjoying that opening stanza to the honors. We'll have to come back here. honors to kick this one off as you can see the morning crowd starting to build here at this beautiful facility He's coming. Right there. Ah, here comes a kicker with the ball we're just waiting for that to get going again right always important to have this person queued up It just it goes 10 there, stays on the ground, a little hard to handle for the Bulldogs. They've done so just fine. That is Barksdale. Barksdale and Wilkie have been the first opening of two minutes players for this Bulldogs team. I'll sure they want to spread it around at some point. A little run comes in there. That's Marla Amon. Amon is another senior on this team. Ball gets moved off to a waiting forward pod there. Down that left-hand side, ripped away nearly by City Honors, but referee says illegally so. So they're going to have to back off 10, and it is going to be Granville ball. Just a little error there, Darian. Just unfortunate there after a massive hit. It's really important to get out of the space and show a clear release, resulting in a turnover of possession. And now so the honors might have the ability to attack out of this end. Curse of the commentator, Unfortunately, though. They, yeah, of course it is, as they knock that one on there, and it's going to be a scrum here. For the Bulldogs in a good position there. Kick came from Emma Doyle there. Yep. Another senior on this team. Red scrum. No, it's black scrum. Crouch. Five. Shondal. Set to put this one in. Another U19 Midwest Thunderbird. The ball in for the Bulldogs. Ball's there and available. Quickly out into the hands of Wilkie. Wilkie just winds her way around one and threw a couple more. While she spins and heads toward the try zone, however, she drops it. It's going to be knock on advantage here for City Honors. City Honors, out team from Buffalo. Going to take this one inside their own 22. Try to move it out a little wider. It doesn't quite get to where it's going. Sada Muhammad tries to move that one. And a couple of knock-ons come on again. So we're going to go back to a City Honors scrum here. Wilkie just sliding through the defense, just absolutely finding those tiny little gaps and really generating the space. But it's so important to keep the ball close to body whenever you're going into contact so you don't do all of that hard work for nothing. But again, Wilkie showing so much promise here early on. City Honors gets that one in. Ball at the back there, good pressure coming on from Schondel. City Honors, whoever able to pick it up and regather. They are inside their own 22. We'll see what they decide to do. They go a little pick and go just to make a little room there. A wonderful work from City Honors. Good body work on the ground to get that ball back. We're going to come back for a penalty against the Bulldogs here. There's coming in from the wrong way. That was Nia Sisson. The junior taking that one into contact. Let's use it, Red. Big run from Sisson coming again. She is determined as she's working her way up towards midfield. The Bulldogs player falls over that, but no problem, says the referee. They're going to go off to this left-hand side here. That's Phoebe Lawton. Takes that one in. Moving back just a little bit, our City Honors. City Honors digging that one out there. Is Barr. Our hands that one up. Another big run coming from Jordan Williams this time. Jordan Williams takes that one in. City Honors on the move. This is the power game that they are known for. Just pushing some players there, opening up some space out wide, but ripped away by the Bulldogs. Good work there. Winds up in the hands of Pulis. Haley Pulis stepping a couple players, looking for someone to move it to. Eventually just has to get it to the ground. Counter Ruck good from City Honors. City Honors is going to regather that one, but illegally so again, says the referee. Hands on the ground, so we're going to have a penalty here for the Bulldogs. But City Honors, Darian, starting to show a little bit of their game. Yeah, they're really showing the speed, and they're also showing the ball movement we see here, too. Just an unfortunate bobble. 
but it looks like we might have had an offsides penalty coming in at Forest City Honors. So Granville again will get the ball. Granville is going to go quick with this one. These players are not 10 here for City Honors. They're going to have to work on this offsides. Haunting a little bit early here in the game, just under seven and a half minutes gone. Big run coming on here from Olivia Graham. Olivia Graham works that one back. Barksdale comes in to clean it up as they move that one out wide there to Doyle. Doyle has the corner. Doyle hands off one, gives her a little more acceleration, gets through another. Tackle comes in, but Doyle's going to touch it down. No problem. Future psychology major touches it down. A great try from the wing. Showing so much promise here. We were talking about Granville throughout this whole beginning of this first half here, just because of the fact that they're moving the ball to space and doing a good job of getting out of pressure areas, but it's the speed that they're showing here. We see the ball movement coming from the back of the scrum here, goes straight to the number 14 in Doyle. She dishes one fun, continues to back her speed, rounds the corner, and just continues to pump through the legs, and it's the dive and the ball security that gets her the try. Well-deserved try here to start off for Granville. Last-ditch tackle doesn't get there. Granville touches it down once again. City Honors trying to talk it out and trying to make those adaptations. You can hear them having those small combos as to what they kind of want to change and adapt so that they can really get back in this game. Just a little too far there for the Granville player. I mean, just the speed, that's all that it takes. You can't teach things like that, especially rounding the corner. It's the confidence and the bravery to go out and take the line on the outside. And then she works to get away from the sideline by cutting back in. It's really close on the side there, but she wants that try bad enough. The honors to kick off here again, down 12 near nil here, just under 10 minutes gone in this first half. The girls high school, a single school championships day. This battle for a seventh place here. Being won at the moment by Granville, but a knock on on the kickoff is gonna give a better attacking position here for the city honors team. Yeah, right here we see the ball kind of go low she drops her body height to try and gather the ball but at that point it's more important to turn your body away to anticipate a possible knock on especially with a low ball like that just unfortunate for granville but city honors finally have the ball down in this end balls at the back there clear pick and go coming nice move getting by a couple of players taking it just out wide by a couple of her players is amelia hernandez He's a rookie on this team. Penalty for not rolling away against Granville. Winds up in a good position here for City Honors. And Amelia Holder comes up quickly to take the ball. Set move coming here as they send in one of their power runners. And that is Sisson again. Taken down that time. Ball comes shooting out the back. So we're going to have to clean that one up just a little bit. Allison Barr, the freshman scrum half, has to go in and take that. So they're going to have to move this one separately. Ball seemed to go forward there off of City Honors. Referee not spotting it. Granville may have taken this one away. That was Wilkie. We we're going to come back initially. Knock on not seen, so it's going to be a penalty against Granville. Another opportunity here for City Honors. We're seeing just a little bit of rush play coming in from City Honors. They've been so ball, ball hungry to get the ball back. And now that they have, they're making these unforced errors, continuing to run kind of sideways. It's important for them to get back to the fundamental skills. Yeah, they're going just a little bit across the face of the defense there and the pressure was a problem. There was Hazel Curran doing that. So they've been allowing the defense just to stretch out wide in its own. It's Adam Muhammad taking it in there. Rookie from Kenya. Ball comes up and in behind. Player nearly hands it forward, but goes on and is going to take that one in. Another good ball here at Four City Honors. Player from Granville has rolled over it again, but this time it's coming in from the side against City Honors. A penalty here for Granville. 
Granville really finding a lot of vulnerability around the breakdown and contesting against City Honors. Just not being very physical in the breakdown leads to a turnover. Beautiful kick though, finds touch there from midfield and Granville now will have the ability to go ahead and get back in this end and have one of our first lineouts of this match. It truly is one of the first lineouts there. You get a look at a little playground in the back here, a Madison United Rugby Club. Great facility out here in Cottage Grove, Wisconsin. Ball coming in here for Granville. And to have something set. Comes up, ball comes out just a little slowly there, but Wilkie able to move it across. The outside goes Fulis. Hands the ball away there. That shook, shook hands the ball away to a screaming Marla Amon. And Marla Amon heads to the try zone. The senior touches down again here at four. The Granville Bulldogs, great try. Eamon making everybody a little bit nervous, trying to work to get into that sweet spot in between the sticks to make for an easier conversion. It almost resulted in her getting held up, but beautiful heads up play. We were talking about how Granville is just so good with the hands. Wilkie is just distributing it left and right, and Shook is doing a good job of connecting between the two. Finding that connection within her centers and then Eamon, it was just easy money for her. We see the good job of pulling in that last defender. There's nobody at home. She still has work to do though, dishing one fen, skirting around the other and then touching it down for the try. Keep an eye out for that trifecta of a back line. Again here, just beautiful running lines. It's that little bit of space that buys her some time. And then that's just speed rounding the corner. There's enough space and enough gas to get her over for the first try. Or for not for the first try for them, but the first try for her of this match. That kick is no good. We're going to stay at 17. Just 14 minutes gone in this first half here. Seventh place match. The girls high school single school championships. Just based off of the skill level within the high school, having the ability to come out and play in these championship venues and have the ability to play in these championship matches really brings up the level of play within the high school level. Just showcasing a lot of raw talent. I'm not sure what's in the water and the food anymore, but these athletes are really coming out and showing out continuously, and it's super fun to watch. I think it would have been okay, Darian, but... That's uh, just my opinion as we get going again here. Ball in the Bulldogs' hands yet again. This team from Granville, Michigan, working their way forward. That's Talon Campbell. He's from Wyoming, Michigan, playing their first year rugby. Wants to be a back, but playing prop at the moment. Ball gets moved forward. They have the width of the field here open. See what they decide to do with it. They go to a little waiting forward pod there. Nice little tip pass from Barksdale to Wilkie. Wilkie now has it across. A little unorthodox left-hand pass that she has, but it gets there. And it gets to Haley Fulis. Haley Fulis back up and running after a knee injury. Started playing in middle school and scores here at the high school championships. Another try here for Granville. Fulis absolutely took off there. Wanted another one of those big long tries that they had just had within Eamon and gets her school onto the board yet again. But it's just the distribution. Wilkie is doing such a good job there. You see her in the number 10 on your far right of moving the ball into that space and getting the speed. We see here this kind of wayward pass. She gets hit once. We see the last defender there. She's just so good at pinning that last defender. And then this is just the speed and the individual effort. She gets set up so well. Again, Wilkie making it silky just doing a good job of an over-the-top fast, not an easy skill to have, but this is easy money, easy skill work for her as she dots it down in between the sticks for a try. Ulyss adds a few more points to the scoreboard. And that kick is good, so we are going to continue to move ahead here. Everything going Granville's way at the moment in this first half. You're two, you're two, you're two. Josiah's three, I'll be one. Need more warning. 
for the honors to pick this up again. A little slow to get to the line. Certainly some work to do for this team. It rolls over a couple people that time. Touch, but goes back. That one may have been knocked on. It was City Honors with a scrum here. Good attacking position for them. Let's see where they can put something together here before this half winds its way down. Yeah, Granville not really doing themselves any favors there on the kickoff. With kickoffs that start to go low, it's just important to give yourself some time. Dive on the ball and secure possession. Kind of putting the hands on the ball and getting handsy doesn't make it so that you can give yourself a good platform. And again, we see City Honors finally getting back down in this end to attack. The Honors gets the ball back there. Hernandez did not take this one. They're going to go out to the backs here. Well handled, taken there by Colder. She moves it out a little wider. Good pressure defense coming on there. Mohammed, a little trouble, has to go to the ground. And from back here, they have some waiting forwards coming. Before Zima, a sophomore, a rookie on the team, takes that one in. Ball up. Good, powerful run coming here from Hernandez, the junior. Her first year of playing. Black I don't think Williams that was on the ground. Pardon me, just saw the number wrong. Quick tap taken here in the penalty, not rolling away from Granville. Good opportunity here for City Honors. City Honors working their way in, looking for some runners out left here. Referee keeps an eye on things, but says it's all good. Everybody is just fine. Hazel Curran takes the ball in. To the ground they go. A little pick and go coming from this City Honors team, but well driven back by this very strong Bulldogs defense. Hernandez again off the back, not finding room through a little hand up and off they go, looking for a little bit of space here, fighting their way through. That's a Layla Ali, the freshman. Oh, they played some rugby in Cyprus. That one's get turned over to this Granville team. Granville puts it across the midfield, was not knocked on according to the referee. They're gonna keep going, nice turn around the corner. That is Emma Doyle. Emma Doyle is on her way. Emma Doyle headed towards the try line and Emma Doyle is going to touch it down at Granville in the try zone again. Doyle was just the summary of a beautiful defensive effort from Granville. They came up right into the face of City Honors, continuously disrupting their ball. They just weren't able to get a good starting platform. And then Granville, their ball handling is just so on point. The accuracy and the precision. Right here we see the turnover, just the defensive effort that they're showing, working to get the ball away, but then they move it away from the pressure area off of a turnover, get it away from where the turnover happened. And that results in a lot of space opening up. We see one, two, three, four City Honors players trying to come across, but we've seen speed like her all day long. It's the pump, she moves the ball away from the pressure area, absolutely swats those flies away and gets them right down for another try yet again. Granville is absolutely on fire. That kick is not going to make it, but Granville certainly on fire as they continue to roll forward here in the first half with the Madison United Rugby Complex. State Capitol, 29-0, Granville in the lead. The Honors versus Granville. After this, we're going to have Eagle versus Hamilton in the fifth place match, followed by Catholic Memorial Columbia Central for third place and the championship game between Divine Savior Holy Angels and Rocky Mountain. We take another look at this try, Darian. Just pure speed around the outside. Just continuously, they have so much speed in the back line, but also backs that are ball hungry, who want the ball and who want to try and make their way down that way. We just see them continuously being so determined, so tenacious to get over to the line. City Honors is really gonna have to find a flame, really gonna have to ignite a match and ignite the change if they wanna try and get back into this game. 
Just a massive goose egg for them, unfortunately, with the defensive effort of Granville. All this being brought to you today on the Rugby Network and live on Next Level Rugby's YouTube page. From Madison United here, player seems to be okay from City Honors, so we're going to keep moving in this first matchup of the day. The honors are ready to go. Player is up and okay. That's Jordan Williams, a junior. An injury here in this finals day championship matchup. Seventh place between City Honors, her team, and Granville, the Bulldogs. Big shout out to the med staff. Let get a little closer. Back on. Referee whistles us back on here, underway at the Madison United Rugby Complex. All knocked on there again, and the kickoff by Granville Darien. Just a little problem for this team. City Honors kind of recognizing a little bit of a tactic there. Tactic there. The kick's going low, and Granville just not able to gather them. I think it's because they're so excited about being able to attack out that they're just taking their eyes off of the ball for one second. That one second error, though, nine times out of ten results in a knock on, and that just results in city honors, just like Groundhog Day, continuing to get down in this end with the scrum. Ball in here for city honors, another good attacking position. Break up the back then from Hernandez. Hernandez has been powerful from this position. Taken down by the Granville defense. They are coming in, but it looked as though illegally so, but they're gonna maintain the ball, our city honors. Granville coming over that one. We will come back for the penalty. Player coming in from an offside position there into that contact. A penalty here for city honors. See if they can get some points on the board before the halftime break. Nice forward run there from Hazel Curran. From City Honors, players have to get in and over. Nearly poached by that Granville defense, but going to continue on the run. Ball came up into the hands of Sisson, Ania Sisson, but an offsides again there against this Granville team, doing themselves no favors in this final moment of the first half here. Here comes Curran, the freshman. Put the ball back across there to Sisson. Sisson moves the ball out, but knocked on in a couple of different directions. We're going to come back for a scrum here at four Granville inside their own 22. Just seeing a lot of knock-ons here happening for City Honors, not really finding the ball, making it to hand. The fatigue kind of setting in here as we are in the 25th minute of this first half here in the seventh and eighth match. However, it's just really important to Gather the ball cleanly. You can't score without ball in hand. But now Granville will get to attack out of this end, right behind the 22. Granville moves on down. Big kick stays in the center of the field, spotting some space, getting it back to halfway. Well taken by City Honors. See what they can do with some broken field play here. Taking it directly in there is Adam Mohammed. Digging it out and keeping it on the move. The ball up there to Jose Gianfi. City Honors digging that one out under the attention of this Granville team. That one may or may not have been out. Referee says no, it wasn't. Players coming in illegally that time with Shondal. Comes in, they're going to set up another tap play. 
Granville really is going to have to establish what a balls out is for this referee. They've gotten called three times now for coming in through the side. It's going to be important for them to kind of adapt to the referee. That time Lawton takes it in as they switch back across field. Looking for some open space there. There's Roslyn Osei-Gyampi. She has touched the ball just a couple times in the last minute or so and been effective in doing so. Looking at that interior defense to attack. City Honors continues on a run here. City Honors, a number of defensive players coming up quickly there for Granville. But get that one away as the ball goes to Mohammed. Mohammed can't get anything going wide there. I play has been a little tough to find here for this team. And Mohammed, Mohammed takes that one in. City Honors will recycle it once again. Ball up into the hands of Osei Amfi. Starting to feature late in this first half with some good runs, finding some space in the defense there. Good work. City Honors continues to roll here. A lot in, uh, Curran, excuse me, taken down right there. Ball coming back across here from City Honors. Late in this first half, a series of penalties keeping them going down this end. Granville pushing them back, however, on defense. That one goes in over the defensive line, scooped up and gone. Rachel Wilkie may turn this one on, and Rachel Wilkie Good speed of off there. Uh, Coach captain touches down for another try. Great work by Wilkie. Good pressure by the defense and Granville gets on the board again. No shock that Wilkie, of course, is going to be around the chaos of defense and gets the turnover just because of her work rate. We saw their Granville just a gun. They had an easy setup on defense because City Honors just taking the ball in with one runner not really giving themselves many options in order to attack. We see here again, just a runner who takes it straight into the heart of Granville. We see here the contest at the breakdown. They've been doing that all game, trying to take it in with a run runner, but goes over the head. Wilkie is just so fast. She's so quick and recognizes and is so aware of her body. We see here the stride through, really extending the legs, pushing on through, what a coast is just really showing a valiant defensive effort and really leading the front here as a senior for them. Lucky enough to call a few Davenport games. They're gonna be very happy to have this player, a good team, as is just adding some more power to them, more rugby intelligence as you see Chase Barkdale stepping up for this kick. And that kick is good. Again here, we were talking about how City Honors just continue to use their one runners. It's Wilkie though, recognizing that she's got to close down that space and get in the passing lane. A wayward pass ends up hitting ball to deck, makes the adaptation to just scoop up the pass. Fans out here watching. Kudos to them for coming early on a rugby day every day is a rugby day here when we play great facility to spend your rugby day at certainly College uh, grove wisconsin madison united complex here all down handled this time by Granville or not then knock forward we're gonna have the scrum here for city honors they have not sure they've handled one uh, kickoff cleanly so far darian that's a fair assessment and with Granville, again, it's about being able to adapt. We're seeing them play at the high school level. So this is kind of the grassroots level now for rugby. We're starting to see the skill develop, but not necessarily be executed. Granville is just going to really have to up the rugby IQ, make those small adjustments, and then continue to play on in this game. Push back, but able to get away there is Amelia Hernandez off to the left-hand side this time. It takes a few to bring her in down, and it does yet again. They've got a couple of backline players there for Granville. Let's see what City Honors can make out of this. Having to dig that one out. Ball goes up just a little high there, but well taken. 
Ring to ring, tries to come in and take that one, but a little pick and go, and nice move there from Sisson. Sisson beats one. Sisson has a couple of players trying to drag her down. She is looking for some teammates and get to hand off there over the try zone. Referee on the spot whistles and a try awarded to City Honors. Great work for the City Honors team. Five points to the good. We'll see who comes up with this one, but what a series of runs by this City Honors team. Finally, a moment for them. They found a gap finally in the Granville defense, just right up from the rock. We see here, though, continuing to pump her leg. She finds that connection there within the number seven, Serena Newell. She's just able to go ahead and break to the ball so well. We see everybody looking to the serve for confirmation. It is an obvious touchdown there. City honors finally making their way onto the board. We've been talking about the kickoffs for Granville and how they haven't been able to feed them, fill them cleanly. It's just leading to City Honors having a really good position to attack off of. And because of that, Layla Ali ends up finishing off with the try. But what a connection and what good heads up play from them. Good work by Layla Ali there. I didn't even see her scoop that ball off of the off of the runner before, off Hernandez. That was a great, or Sisson, excuse me. That was a great run. Great pickup, good, good awareness. See the kick to come here from Colder. That kick is not going to make it, and the referee whistles for the end of the first half here. 36 to 5. Granville leads City Honors. Second half will be coming up in just a couple of minutes. Stay with us and we will be back with that action just after this. Play with our hearts. We don't play with sticks, bats, or gloves. We don't wear shoulder pads or helmets. We keep playing when it hurts. And we leave everything on the field. What we wear must be built for our game.
in our game. We play with our hearts. We don't play with sticks, bats, or gloves. We don't wear shoulder pads or helmets. We keep playing when it hurts. And we leave everything on the field. What we wear must be built for our game. When we pick up the ball, we also pick up a legacy. A legacy that stretches beyond your current team. A legacy built on the backs of those who came before you with hard work. And for those who will come after you, we promise it won't be easy. But we'll be there, supporting you on and off the field. Welcome back to Cottage Grove, Wisconsin, just outside the beautiful capital, Madison, Wisconsin. It's the girls' high school 2023 rugby and national tournament. It is Granville Rugby leading City Honors. City Honors kicking off here. The Honors from Buffalo, Granville from Granville, Michigan. Big lead currently for Granville, but a great late try from City Honors. As Granville takes that one forward through Wilkie. Wilkie effective in the first half from that fly half position. Good pressure coming on from City Honors there. Ball goes down. It gets put back up over the head into Olivia Graham's hands. A little offload there for this Granville team. And going forward is Elise, Elise Wood. Or Woods. He goes into contact. City Honors, an early penalty there. Granville finally electing to go ahead and kick for time. We're seeing it kind of go back. Will it land out of bounds? Will it go out the back? It's like it will be all the way out the back, which means that it should be. Going to come back there from the referee. Ball. You get to choose. They kick it straight out of the angle. You can take it strong from where they kicked it. Oh, the country drop. City honors elect from the scrum where the ball was kicked from. They'll have a good attacking opportunity here on the little mistake. The kickoff for this team. For the changes here. confusion there. She walked off of the field, so referee kind of having to communicate through it. <laughs> Hazel like seems to be okay. She's back. coming back into the game. <laughs> Hazel Kerr in the first year player at Buffalo Public Schools playing for City Honors here. A little rugby in the UK, now playing in Buffalo. Might have been replaced. Ball that came in from Allison Barry. Well taken by Barry there, comes across. Runner takes it a little bit still, still does Mohammed. Out of Mohammed gets taken down by Fulis. Ripped away there by Granville. Good work on the ground, but illegally, says the referee. He wants to have a conversation with a couple of these Granville players. Before you guys start to counter ruck, I need to see the tackler clearly roll away. Okay. Right? Because the problem isn't with the ruck, it's with your tackler impeding them. Okay. So they need to roll yep. out before you start messing it Can up. Can I tell right? them that? Yes. Please tell them. 
And of course, utilizing the chain of command, we see here the referee communicate something through the captain. Captain respectfully accepts and then has to go ahead and convey the points to her team. The best part about rugby is the control of the game. It's extremely chaotic, but due to the chain of command that kind of runs through here, makes it so that the game is played very well and very safely. And across the 40 meter line, they come through Curran. Curran. Which is that one back, a little pick and go from City Honors. City Honors has paid off for them before. Big break coming. Big run coming across. That's Ali. She scored in the first half with a quick pick and go. Excellent work from her. They're right outside the 22 of Granville as we get the second half started. Ball offsides there from Granville. Gonna be a penalty here for City Honors. Gonna kind of work their way into this game as time goes on. Big run coming here, power coming through. Players not able to tackle, but eventually taken down Sisson. Sisson the junior, played a, a full game out with a broken foot according to her bio here. So certainly a tough customer. Granville players trying to come in over that. Player may have picked it up just in front, has done. Came in a little legally, so ball back to Granville. Quick they go. And well taken there by Wilkie. Wilkie on the run. Wilkie across the 22, and Wilkie has one player on her. Wilkie headed for the star line, and Wilkie with a long range penalty. That's five points on the board. Wilkie, what a try. We've been talking about her all game, just her speed, the heads up play, showing why she's one of the college recruits out of this Granville side. That was almost an 80 meter try off of the penalty. One thing Granville did so well is they're so quick to recognize the penalty here. We see her just look up, recognize that there's nobody there in that 15 meter channel at all. Continues to run around the corner, rounds around. Ollie just burnt herself out in a long line break, not able to hawk her down. Wilkie, we see some players come across, not getting the right angle on the corner flag. This is just pure speed and heads up play. It's confident play completely backing herself, knowing that she wants to make it down to the try line. She knows her speed and she knows that she's speedier than some of those city honor players. Just really smart play from the Granville player in Wilkie. Good bit of sustained possession there from city honors. Turned over quick, shows you how quickly Wilkie can play that. Long run as Darian pointed out, 41 to five. Remember, stay with us. This is going to be Eagle from Idaho versus Hamilton from Wisconsin in the fifth place match. In the third place, Catholic Memorial versus Columbia Central. And the final between Divine Savior, Holy Angels and Rocky Mountain coming up. 1230 Central, 130 Eastern here on the Rugby Network. Great series of games for you today. We get one more look at the try here. Just going to continue to see Wilkie, I think, throughout this whole game with Granville. If City Honors can't learn to make that adaptation to uh, ensure that she is completely covered on defense, the moment that you start recognizing that a player is continuously breaking line, the adaptation is to make sure that she's marked. She's not ever left unattended to. Wilkie is so smart, and if they can't find a way to consolidate, City Honors will have a long second half. To be honest, through Amelia Calder, that one is not looking like it's going to make a 10. Made it about nine and nine tenths. And it just dies right there before the 10 meter line. Come back for a scrum here for Granville. It almost looked like if it had one more bounce, it would have gone 10. <laughs> just one more little bounce. Just on the line there. I've never seen From a double kick Granville. effort before.
right at midfield. Granville will launch another attack here. With a good lead in the seventh place game. Ball to the back, take off and off to the left hand side they go through Barksdale. Barksdale gets the ball to Wilkie. Wilkie moves it quickly into the hands of Doyle. Doyle makes a break there and Doyle's across the 22. And Emma Doyle offloads one. It goes back just a bit, still in the hands of Granville here. Can't quite make the try on that one. Good cover defense from City Honors. Break comes there from Schondel. City Honors in trying to disrupt that one. It comes back to Granville. Still in possession but a tough time here as Rick Tarink. Rugby family, the Rick Tarinks. Got to take that one in, ball held up. It'll be a goal line dropout here for the City Honors team. What brilliant play for City Honors, finally stopping it. We see the 2v1 here by Wilkie. Of course, to Doyle, who's got the speed. She rounds one, rounds two, dishes the fend. But right here, we see the number 21 hold on for dear life. Kind of disrupts the play a little bit. We see a clear breakdown. The line break happens, but City Honors just does a brilliant job of working to get body under ball, resulting in a goal line dropout. Ball back in the hands of Granville. Big break coming here. This time from Eamon. Big hit comes rolling in from City Honors. Kick and go. Here they go through Olivia Graham, a sophomore. Olivia Graham goes in, but taken away there by City Honors. Right on their own try zone. They're going to have to find some room here. They're going to go for an exit as they go for a big break through Sisson. Sisson can only make a couple of meters that time. Granville through Rig to Rink, trying to move that one back. Our referee's going to come back. A couple of injured players the referee's going to want to attend to. <laughs> While these players are attended to, we're going to walk you through a few of these great tries today, Darian. While they walk you through these, just because of how technical they are here, we see just the speed, and it's all because of the ball distribution that has been continuously happening for Granville, and it's the speed around the corner. They're doing such a good job of breaking the line. We see here Wilkie, she is distributing the ball left and right to long-awaiting players that are patient and fast. Players that are waiting for the ball, waiting for their timing, knowing their strengths and knowing exactly what they are good for, which is speed like this. The back line for Granville, not enough can be said about their efforts. They are continuously making their way down into the try zone right here. And it's because of players like Wilkie, a Davenport recruit who is making her way to the collegiate level because of her tenacity and her ferociousness on defense and attack. Granville are just absolutely stepping up to the plate. But right here we see City Honors one and only try that they've had so far is because of the connection that happened between big runners that being utilized through their pack and then also finally finding some success with the dynamic forwards, but players like Wilkie, the number 10, a 10 out of 10 recommend her for your distributor. We see here the fly half really getting a taste of her own medicine and making her way into the try zone continuously. Two tries to her name, claps all around though, as it looks like we are about ready to resume play in this seventh and eighth match. We're going to see what the call was when the referee initially made it. We'll have to see what winds up here as these players get looked at by the great medical staff here at the Madison United Rugby Complex. You hear players warming in the background there from Hamilton High School. We're going to take an Eagle High School. Wisconsin versus Idaho matchup here at the high school single school championship. Always a good sight to see a player be able to walk off. Unfortunately, that's the high risk reward of rugby. 
it's always risky play and you risk injury and such, but we do have a wonderful medical staff here in Madison, Wisconsin, a sir who is conscientious of players around the ground and safety. This game, though, it's chaotic and messy and extremely violent. We try and be as smart about it as we can. Physical. Physical. Not violent. Uh, yeah, not <laughs> here violent. we come. We don't want violence. Strong here, to be honest. Yeah. John, I don't know what you're trying to say here, but I'm pretty sure that women I... usually come for the violence and we stay for it too. Okay. All right. I just tried for, for both sides. I try to use the word physical. It's okay. It's all good. It's a violent, violent rugby. So that, that's what happens. We're good to go. We have city honors. Getting the scrum here. All going to come in for Barry. And then she slips the ball a couple times, able to get it back, but that kick goes right in the middle of the field. And maybe Fulis is not the person you want to get a hold of it. And Fulis headed towards the line and over it. No problem. Really, Fulis. You said it perfectly. Fulis is not the one that you want to kick it to just because of her speed and her awareness around the ball, she does such a good job of gathering that ball while it's in the air and then just looking up and attacking. The Grandview Senior is just making waves. We see here the wayward kick. Usually you look to try and find touch, but it goes about 10 meters out right in front. She snatches the ball right out of the air, cuts back inside, gets away from the defender with the fend, continues to pump her legs on through, dots it down for the try. Few less will add more to her score tally points. And that kick is good as they extend their lead. Granville High School, the home of the Cowbell apparently, scores another one here and we roll on as Granville continues their lead. See what you did there with the cowbells in Madison, Wisconsin. Oh, you got that, yeah. So just making sure. <laughs> Forty-eight to five, Granville leads City Honors. Does go 10 and Granville on the move here. Granville well taken. Granville big break here this time for Marla Amond. Marla Amond eventually hauled down by Saad Mohammed. Saad Mohammed. Ball nearly taken away by City Honors, but a legally player coming up tackling on top high was Mohammed. A yellow card to Mohammed for that high tackle. Yeah, we just see the lack of effort here to work to go low. We see her grab even almost reaching for the braid. Luckily missed that because that's an extremely dangerous tackle right there. Drags her down by the horse collar of the jersey. We see here just she gets kind of tripped up underneath the ankles, which causes that injury. It's not just a matter of the upper part of the body when it comes to bringing people down by the collar. It's dangerous. Referee has to blow it up. Has a little bit of time to determine that it should have been a yellow card. And now City Honors will play a man down. 14 against a very strong 15 at Granville side. Up and moving around. Yeah, it's his but a flesh wound. Not going to help this City Honors team out very much. Mohammed's been excellent for them so far today. And a quick tap they go. Get the ball up into the hands of Barksdale. Barksdale unloads it there to Amon. Amon gets through a couple. She's looking at the line, and Amon touches down. No problem that time. A good try. And they hit the 50 mark to Granville. 
Eamon almost took that personal when she was robbed of a try just before. We see here just the work rate. Players coming in to check in on her, make sure that she's all good. But of course she is. Ankles fine after a try just like that. We see here just the camaraderie and the respect of the teammates. That's been the trifecta all day. Wilkie, Fulis, and Eamon. We see here the ball movement through the number eight. She pops it off to Eamon, who's so ball hungry, despite a little bit of an ankle injury here we saw earlier. It doesn't even seem to phase her here. Continues to go ahead and power through that space, powers through for the try. They're finding these tiny gaps. As we see here, City Honors just running a drift defense ducking the head underneath, losing sight of the target. Bodies are flying everywhere just because of how powerful Granville is. Another try for Eamon. <clears throat> Kick to come here. This will be Barksdale. Barksdale with a little hop. That one underneath, so we're not going to add two points on there, but 53 to 5. Granville, the Bulldogs, looking strong here in this seventh place matchup. Again, just their ball movement. Not enough can be said about it. They attack the line with such bravery, and then it's the confidence to go ahead and continue the run, continue the play. We just see here City Honors again, just making these arm tackles, not putting a shoulder and not stopping bodies. They're so fit and they're so fast here. They can't even really catch up. And as they try and come across, the effort is there for City Honors, but the finish isn't. Granville's got the finish in the bag. They're well taken this time by Granville. Granville across the 40 meter line. That's Wilkie, no problem for her. She keeps her feet waiting for some players to get there. They get some quick ball away. Ball to Shondel. Shondel moves it off to the right hand side. Little step outside. Little step inside. Great moves there from Haley Fulis. Haley Fulis across the 22. He's got a couple players trying to catch up. Offloads that one and a loss it is, but going back possibly. They're looking for Olivia Graham to get into the try zone. Give some points to some people, but it's not going to work their way. City Honor is going to get a scrum here just in front of their own posts. Fulis trying to be so kind to her teammates. We saw her check in on everybody. What is kind soul? She cuts back in, does all of this hard work. I mean, she literally had the cake. Can she eat it too? Goes to pass it, wants Graham to get a little taste of it. But Graham, both hands on the ball and then fumbles the bag right outside of the try zone. Just unfortunate for them. It won't matter too much. Granville has such a massive lead, but it was very unfortunate there for such a beautiful play. Brown right in front of their post. Player lifted up a little bit here from City Honors. They get it back and go for the kick. That kick is not going to make touch. Going to wind up right in front. Going to wind up in an opportunity there for Lee Shondel. Shondo touches down for an opportunist try and the scrum half gets on the board. Yet another Granville try in the seventh place match. Granville almost taking it personal whenever they don't make it in the try zone or whenever they're robbed of one, they just come right back. It's because of errors like this with kicks that are down in this end, there's no need for pressure like this to kick right out. It forces your kick to not go where you want it to go we did not want for City Honors is right in the hands of the number nine Granville. She's been distributing left and right, but just hasn't really had her moment. Shondal, just with a beautiful heads up play, she catches it right out of the air and then just skirts around for a very fast try for Granville yet again. It come here for Granville as time marches on here in the seventh place matchup. Going all Granville's way at the moment. Barksdale. The boot under that one. It is not going to make it. 
58 to 5. Granville leads City Honors still with a yellow card. City Honors yet again just not doing themselves any favors here. The skill just not really making it so that the ball can go the distance. Unfortunate for them. We're entering into the last couple plays, or couple minutes for this seventh place match. And it's looking like Granville will take the cake for this, but City Honors still. It's about how you want to end your season. This is the final game, final time with your friends. A lot of times we go into this match knowing that the same combo of players probably will never play again. We've got people graduating, continuing on. So it's just important that for these last 15 minutes, you really play how you want to leave it. So just a valiant effort from both teams to come. Ball to Granville there, a little break up the outside. Martin Godfrey, one of the replacements, takes that one initially. Ball back there to the try score. Shondel, Shondel moves it out. Waiting forward, just putting it through the hands there. Now they look to go just a little wider. Back in. However, they have some runners out here. Ball up in the hands of Wilkie. Little bobble there from Kylie Shook. Kylie Shook will be joining the armed forces when she graduates. Co-captains here on this team. from Allison Barry. Comes, however, back to Granville. Granville through Wilkie. Wilkie puts a pass on there and not handled. We're going to come back here. They're on offsides against City Honors. So it's going to be Granville penalty at 45 meters out from their own line, or, or from the uh, City Honors line, excuse me. They break up the middle there for Barksdale. Barksdale looking for somebody to offload to. Gets the ball up to Grant Graham, but goes forward again. It is in the hands of City Honors inside their 22. They're going to play the knock on here where they can dig it out. Barry looking for that one. Good break there this time from that's Avery Terry. Avery Terry turns the corner. And the flanker, freshman in her second year of rugby, played a little bit middle school. Touches down here for Granville. Wonderful try for the freshman. Hugs all around for Granville. They have continuously ended up on the side. We see fans over there with the cowbell absolutely raging in Madison, Wisconsin. People starting to trickle in. We've got a lot more rug rugby left to be played today. But uh, Granville really showing us the capability of uh, what teams can do when they're on attack. It's because of the defensive effort that they've shown. They do such a good job of getting into that tiny space in the ruck that generates the turnover there. And Wilkie, of course, she's going to be around the chaos, around the mess. As soon as she sees that, that they've won the ball back, she moves it away from the pressure area, finds that connection. And Granville, with yet another try, they find it in Terry. Kick from Granville. This one goes through 65 to 5. They've extended their lead. We even see here Fulis almost had her hands on the back of the number seven Terry as she was going over for the try. The camaraderie for Granville really speaks volumes. Their connectivity, not enough can be said about their trust in the past and the way that they're working so well together. They're checking in on each other, ensuring that the communication is good. Morale is high. That's exactly what you want from a winning team. City honors, slow to get it to the line. They're still playing in this match, but they've had to play a lot of defense against Granville. Ron, you read. 
to the honors to kick this one off. Granville well taken out to their own 40 meter line. And working their way towards halfway. Maintaining the run there. The push is Barksdale. Ball coming across from Shondel. Nice little break by Woods. Woods carries a couple of defenders with her. Gets to the 40 meter line of City Honors. Gonna have to get to a knee here. Players are gonna need to release. And they do. So still in the roll here are the Bulldogs. Bulldogs. Nice little offload out there to Shook. Shook breaks. Shook has one to beat. Shook is going to beat that one and head it towards the try line. A little turn of pace. Touches it down. And Kylie Shook. One more try for the Franville team. Shook with the shake and bake. Left us all up here shook as well. It was the cutback inside and what seemed like prime real estate. City Honors left a massive gap there open for Shook, which is not what you want to do. She's fit and she's fast and she shows up. We see here Fulis taking it to the line per use. Works around, dishes the fend. Two hands back on the ball for the offload. The cut back inside. City Honors tries to come across two players down as she cuts back inside side creates a little bit of separation by showing the hand rounds the corner this is the speed shook absolute beauty of a play the cutback off of the right hand foot and she's just so fast and powerful off of it that it just continues to propel her through what a well-deserved try for shook conversion looks good and granville the performance of the day with this attacking effort Granville certainly have the better day today in this seventh place matchup. And again, following this, we have three more matches for you today. Eagle High School versus Hamilton in the fifth place game. Third place between Catholic Memorial and Columbia Central out of Tennessee. In the championship match, Divine Savior Holy Angels from Wisconsin and Rocky Mountains, obviously from Colorado. The honors set to kick off again here through the freshman Colder. A lot of young players in the City Honors team, Darian. So I'd say they have a very bright future ahead of them. Really, only about two seniors in the entire squad of 24 they have out here today, and mostly freshmen and sophomores. So great work to build on here for this team. But Granville will be graduating a number of these seniors. See how they reload in years to come as Granville. More big runs there. A nice little break here from Shondel. She's starting to find those spaces. Around the outside, picked up well by Fulis. Fulis eventually taken down. Rick Drink comes in and settles that one. Good work out there from Wilkie. Gets it in the middle into the hands of Malia Romo. We've seen a ton of Romo today. Doing the hard work in the rucks, obviously. You don't see them running all the time. Big run coming in here from Barksdale. Referee sees a player go down. We're gonna have to have the medical staff out to check on one of these Granville players. While this player gets a 10 2, we're just going to step away for a second. We'll be right back with the remainder of the match after this.
I use Thorn products pre and post workout to maximize my recovery, muscle growth, and make sure that I can be my best self on the field. Thorn's a supplement company that I can trust. They're NSF certified for sports, so I know that I can take this and know what's in their product. I use their protein, get my muscles nice and big. The products I use with Thorn have minimal ingredients. They're high quality, they're clean, they're batch tested, tastes amazing, and it made everything in my recovery and my performance better. If you're not recovering off the pitch, you're not your best self on the pitch. Thorn. We are back here at the Madison United Rugby Club. Great rugby complex here in Cottage Grove, Wisconsin, just outside of the beautiful capital of Madison for this girls high school rugby national championship, single school division. This is the seventh place match where Granville will do a commanding lead over City Honors. Is going to put this one in. Well, from Michigan over City Honors, a Buffalo-based team, young team and up and coming. Here's the number eight, Barksdale. Chase Barksdale just hands the ball over to Wilkie and a late try here from Wilkie as Granville continues to extend their lead. Darian, just a one-way traffic at the moment. Yeah, Wilkie just really finding the sweet spot there and really getting set up by her teammates. We've seen her now three times down into that try zone, adding to the point differential 75 to 5 at Granville over City Honors. Amen picks up the ball, wraps around, gets around the fly half and the inside center, almost commits the outside, and then everybody kind of sucks in around that player. Wilkie has nobody on her and is not marked. We talked about how she's a danger player. Players like that you need to keep an eye on. But because of the lack of being able to finish the tackle, people have to come back in to try and complete one. That leaves about three, four Granville players completely vulnerable. We see here the applause coming from the crowd. And it looks like Granville is already set up and ready for their big celebration here after a very hard seventh match. That one, and it is good. Referee whistles and whistles us for the end of our match there. Your seventh place champion is a Granville over City Honors. City Honors. Did well, young team, a lot to look forward to. They'll be coming back. We're going to bring you Eagle High School versus Hamilton High School coming up in the fifth place match. We'll be back with that game in just a moment.
take your uh, strengths and weaknesses and work with you to like make you a better person and player. You hit each other and then you're friends. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I really like the camaraderie of it and like the game is just so physical and it's fun. Definitely try it. Like you maybe don't think you're the strongest, but once you go out and like you hit someone, that adrenaline is so amazing. What got you into rugby? Well, I was like fouling out in all my basketball games, so I was like, <laughs> why not try rugby out? World's best. In the hands of everybody. everyone, Kate Zachary, uh, member of the USA Women's National Team, as well as a current player over in England, uh, training with the Exeter Chiefs. Just want to take a moment and wish you all good luck this weekend in the National Championships. It's a really exciting opportunity and I hope you all go really well and can raise the cup at the end of this. Um, just remember while you're out there, I think the biggest piece of advice I try to keep in mind is the minute you step across those white lines, it's the same game you've been training for. It's the same game you've been playing week in and week out. So there's no extra pressure this weekend. Just go out there, trust your instinct, back yourself, smile a lot. And most importantly though, celebrate every moment with your teammates. Uh, it's a huge success. You've done an amazing job to get here. Now just enjoy yourselves. All the best. Hi everyone, I'm Elena Olson from the USA Sevens team. And I just wanted to wish you all a huge good luck for this weekend. Um, I started playing in college, so it's really awesome seeing younger players get the opportunity to compete and express themselves. Um, so I hope you go out there this Wisconsin, the Madison United Rugby Complex. This is the Girls High School 2023 Rugby National Tournament. This is going to be the fifth place matchup between Hamilton High School Rugby the Lady Mustangs of Eagle High School from Idaho. Hamilton is going to be running right to left on your screen in the red and white stripes, maroon and white stripes. Green is going to be Eagle High School Lady Mustangs. John Broker with Darian Lovelace here on the Rugby Network, bringing you this exciting day of action as we get underway. It goes 10 there, Hamilton Rugby, first touch of the ball. Hamilton Rugby moves this one quickly. Looking for some runners. Just has to take a step back to get that one. Does Olivia George, the senior All-State Wisconsin player. All coming back out here. Cut back in by a forward pod. Able to recycle. First couple of minutes here in this fifth place matchup. Looking good. We'll bring in Darren in just a second. Eagle. Takes that knock on. We're just going to be there. Scrum coming up. Darian, good matchup coming here. These teams certainly look like good intent from the first get-go there. Yeah, Hamilton already showing that they've got a little bit of the pattern. They've got really strong runners that are looking to try and hit the hinge of the defense, but we're finally going to see the Eagles have a chance to attack out with the scrum. Eagle, nice little break there. Good ball moving quickly, looking to go wide. We're going to have to up there. They get caught up just in the midfield. Ball coming back across. Nice forward pod. Good run onto the ball they have. The Eagle. Eagle moves it off to the left-hand side there. Good work. Another cut back in into the heart of the defense. We're on the one just a little bit wider. Capture a few more players out there as the ball comes around to the wing. Wing has to take that one. Stay in it just a bit still. Back across they come. Here come the Lady Mustangs. Good series of phases they're putting together right away. Whatever their warm-up is, they are ready to go. That is, you know, Serta took that one in. Ball comes back across. Mustangs on the move here. Nice handoff. Nice offload out to the wing. Vivian Jackson. Takes a hold of that one. Ball back in the middle of the field. Off they come, left-hand side, maintaining this 
Momentum, off they go, looking for that wing. Wing comes back in, good coverage by Hamilton. Excellent opening period here. Both teams very well organized on offense and defense. Nice little tip run in there. Good work by the Lady Mustangs. Ball squirts back out. And a kick up and over there. Gives away possession to Hamilton almost, but slides back underneath. Trello nearly wants to pick it up. A ball goes back towards the Hamilton try zone and in and over and go the Lady Mustangs. Great opening try from this team from Idaho. Good five points on the board. Good tactical game there, Darian. Mustangs with the stampede. We see everybody else equally as impressed with that play with a little chip kick over the top. We see here they move the ball so well. Ball goes to the right and then the little chip kick over top. They've got good coverage back there, Hamilton does, but it goes through the leg, an unfortunate bobble. One other person tries to pick it up, loses sight because the Mustangs are absolutely stampeding through that space. Just able to go ahead and get some tries on the board for them. We see they're just losing sight of the ball for one second. The little kick off the toe and then just sliding right in to get a try for the Lady Mustangs. And that kick goes up. Good. We are at seven for the Lady Mustangs right away. A really good tool now that we know that the Lady Mustangs have in their toolbox now is the kick in open field play. Uh, that's a tool that not a lot of teams really have uh, with the connection between the kick and the chase. Executing both of those skills really shows that hard work does pay off. Gets them on the board first. And now Hamilton will have to kick off to the Lady Mustangs. All up to the Lady Mustangs. Nice work from their number eight. All out and across here. Mustangs on the move. Nice pick up there, however. Turned over by Strelo. Strelo takes that one in. Happy at number nine. We have an advantage here out to the Lady Mustangs. Looking at the 40 meter line right there. Trying to get their own phases together. Good counter rock coming in from the Lady Mustangs. Penalty against this time, however. Referee's gonna bring that one back. Lady Mustangs gonna tap this one. Player gets in the middle there. Well worked, able to break away from the tackle, looking for somebody to offload to and finds it. Coming in from Hamilton. Nice offload in the center of the field, good power coming in from the Lady Mustangs. Hamilton trying to rip it away, but not happening. They've got some runners out the left-hand side here. Fullback puts in a nice pass, pass goes wide. Spilled forward, however, so we have a knock-on advantage here for Hamilton. Hamilton or Rugby starting to move. The referee still has the arm out for that knock-on advantage. We'll see if they're going to need that one. Ball left in behind, so we're going to come back for that original one. You see those first knock-ons come in there, but it's going to come back to the second one. We'll have the eventual scrum here. Hamilton now with a chance to move on their own. Some very talented players in the team. A little wraparound coming. They've gotten that ball wide. Got a couple of players coming on the outside here. Is the speed going to be there for Smolik? Smolik hauled towards the touch line. Able to keep that one alive, but this time... Just taking over a strong defense there from the Lady Mustangs.
Lady Mustangs throw here. All up there for the Lady Mustangs. Moving that one across field, waiting forward pod. Good structure here for this team. Turning around through their number eight. Ball coming out, A nice wide skip pass. Taken out there, good tackle comes in there from Smolik to Junior. Back across field they come. A little awaiting forward pod. Nice movement there, looking for a little tip. Tip gets away, they're able to get that one forward just a little bit more. Good work on these pods by this Lady Mustangs team. They power their way across midfield. They'll need a distributor to appear here and move that ball out. I've found it. A little move out to that side. Nice step in the middle. Good break for the Lady Mustangs. Lady Mustangs continuing their role here. Good tackle by Hamilton, but a series of phases maintained here for this Idaho based team. Great work of moving away across. Nice break in on the midfield by a front rower for the Lady Mustangs. Good line, waiting for it. Nice step inside there. Good footwork. Wanted it to go the other way. They're going to keep it on this side. Good, powerful run right at the 22. All across. Nice little short pass. A big hit comes in from Hamilton. Hamilton able to turn that one over. They're inside their own 22. To stand a serious bit of pressure there. Able to come away with it. Ball bounces, but up into the hands of one of their players. They've got it to the width here. Good tackle coming in from the Lady Mustangs. Ride for the quick pick and move up field, but nothing happening there. It's going to be a scrum to this Eagle High School team. But good, a bit of defensive work there from Hamilton Darien. Darien will be back up in just a second. We have a scrum coming here for this. Eagle team at the 40 meter line. Ball set from the Lady Mustangs. Lady Mustangs driving themselves forward. Little break off the back. The power continues to show here. Big run coming in. That's Reese Woods. All across. Looking out just a little wider. They've got runners. Good pin there. They get the ball around the outside. Taylor Leone, the wing takes that one. Ball coming across. Good power run from the Lady Mustangs. They're looking at the try zone again. There's some space in the middle of the field here. And this offensive structure working well for them. Able to get it through some attacking units across the field. Players not rolling away. It's going to be Lady Mustangs ball. One player to beat. Players definitely not 10 there. Maybe going across the try zone. They are not so far. They're right outside. Try zone just begging there. One little push may make it work. And across they come. And that time, try awarded. Great try there from a wonderful set of movements from Eagle High School. They have really done a good job here. We see a little break from half, just spotting that space in behind. Just puts the ball to the ground. The space just outside. Nice move to the width, nice 
line back in, just go right over the try zone. Good work there. Eagle High School, try awarded. Kick is good, and the lead gets extended there. Cheering for Hamblin there. Kick off to come here. Hamblin kick off. You see Megan Rank, the senior, to kick this one right at the 50 meter line here at the Madison United Rugby Complex. All down into the hand of the Lady Mustangs. Lady Mustangs again, just pure power coming from them with their forwards. Good mix. Power and pace along the team. Players playing their roles really well. Hamilton trying to get in and disrupt, but that one's going to come back to the Lady Eagles. Or sorry, the Lady Mustangs. One bounces in behind. Chance here as it rolls out. It will be a Hamilton line out. Good attacking position for them. And it goes to the front this time, but it slips over in the middle. They've wound up with it, but it rolls forward, knocked on, knock on advantage here, according to the referee. So we'll come back to be Lady Mustang's ball. Very strong players in this Eagle team here. The oh. Come here from Lady Mustangs as Reese Woods gets that one in. We'll be going to Sacred Heart University in Bridgeport, Connecticut next year. Great Naira team. What a kick. What a bounce. Well taken, and this roll continues for the Lady Mustangs. Looking strong in the beginning of this game. Nice work around the side there. And that's the wing, Taylor Leone. Taylor Leone, the sophomore, touches down. Great try for Eagle as they continue to push the scoreline. 15 minutes on in the first half here on the Rugby Network. Looking great are this Eagle High School Lady Mustangs team. Leone just executing a beautiful try there, found within the Lady Mustangs. They did such a good job of working the ball into space. But here we just see the individual effort, the speed and the tenacity, works her way through, is just so patient out on the outside. She goes out and does a little stutter step, really throws the defender off, and that just creates that tiny little bit of space that she needs to round the corner. Really beautiful team try coming in for the Lady Mustangs. That's showing a lot of promise against Hamilton. We see just the tiny little gaps that they're finding there, those little spaces. The footwork is one of the underrated ways to make space here in this game. She does a brilliant job around the corner, gets the try on for her team. Just a very good individual effort from Leone, the number 14. And that kick was good, a great kick by Kylie Heichman. Another sophomore on this team. Good mix of years on this Lady Mustangs team. Will bode well for them as the future comes. A couple of players headed off to Sacred Heart University. Kicking on the sun comes down for the Lady Mustangs. Lady Mustangs 
19 nil, 17 minutes gone in this fifth place matchup. Ball comes across, a nice little work out to the pod. Space opens up, looking for a runner. Well tackled by Hamilton eventually. Ball comes across. Looking for a runner out wide and certainly find it as ever. You see the structure working so well for this team to try score Leone. Takes that one into contact. Hamilton trying to come in and pick here. Referee spots an infraction there. There's a player coming off sides into the wrong area from Eagle. Going to be Hamilton rugby ball just inside the Eagle half. It's always good whenever you really show the team effort. Finding the vulnerability there and knowing that she's isolated leads to Hamilton getting such a good turnover. And now they are back on the attack, but a big hit already coming in from the Lady Mustangs. Yeah, Olivia George feeling the, the brunt of that one. Welcome up to Reutinger. Ronnie Reutinger, the number eight there for this Hamilton team. And across they go. They get the ball up there to Camille Torres. Torres puts a kick in. Find some space in there. Let's see if the runners can get onto this. They're under a bit of pressure. Going to have to do something as the run comes up this left-hand side. Keeping the ball alive till they can get their structure set again. Going to play from their own five-meter line are this Lady Mustangs team. See if they decide to exit. If they stay with this, they're going to go for the kick. They're going to keep that one in field. They seem to spot it some space down there. Hamilton coming across. Leone can't quite get to that one. Collision in the middle of the field. Ball up into the hands of Woods. Referee has spotted the knock on there. We're going to back for a scrum. an attempt to try and move the ball into space. They're just getting a little bit too fast, a little bit too quick to try and move it. But we see here the kicking game between the two games is pretty phenomenal. They're finding that there's a little bit of vulnerability back there, a little bit of space. We see the contest come in from Leone, but it's a pickup from Woods that results in a knock on. Unfortunate there for the Lady Mustangs. From for Hamilton, they're putting it in from the tight head side. It does come back for them, but picked up out of the tunnel, however. Our free spot to coming straight out. Come back for another put in here for Hamilton. Big push coming in there from Eagle. The referee's going to bring it back. You can only, under 18, you can only drive certain distances. So in high school or rugby, we'll see if that comes in to be a factor. Yeah, Hamilton is really going to have to dig their boots into the dirt, really try and get a stable platform here because the Lady Mustangs are such a herd and a force to be messed with. They're just absolutely powering over top. Hamilton's really going to have to win this scrum. Hamilton is going to take this one cleanly. Ray Strilo moves that one out. One of the seniors in this team. The switch pass does not come on there. Megan Rank has to take that one in. Big rip away here from the Lady Mustangs on offense again, as they have been for most of this half. We're just over halfway through. Or over the 20-minute mark. Sorry, these aren't uh, full 40s. All coming across for... The Lady Mustangs, a nice step in and step out, brings them back to halfway. Piling over is Hamilton. That turnover is good. Good work from Hamilton High School. Taken down at the 40-meter line. Yet another powerful hit. George gets hit hard by one of the Lady Mustangs. Unafraid of contact. Another a big hit comes in. Lassiter gets taken that down that time. We have an advantage pointed out here from the referee. 
for what it's for as Hamilton comes back in, has to reset. At times it's Rosa Martinez, the junior. Hamilton comes across. The referee letting him play may not have been an advantage there. Or it definitely was if they're coming back right now. And here comes the referee going to penalize this Eagle team. Hamilton just making it so easy for the Lady Mustangs to read the defense. They're going in with a runner who's isolated and then two support players trying to flood in there to hit the breakdown. Problem is, though, is that the Lady Mustangs are just so fast over the ball. Hamilton starting so deep really is going to have to give themselves some time before the defense meets them. I think Hamilton's not used to the pressure defense again right now as this Lady Mustangs team is strong on defense. Run coming in from Olivia George. She makes some ground. They're right about the 40 meter line now. And the phases together, Hamilton, they can use some points as the game moves forward. Martinez again, he's hit player and not releasing her there. They're not releasing the ball. I thought the, the tackling player had to let her go. Oh, and I was correct. <laughs> Referee just had a hand on the wrong way there, Darian. We're gonna penalty here for <laughs> Hamilton. Good eye, good call, good call. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm more used to admitting I'm wrong with the referees, so being right every once in a while certainly doesn't hurt. Players coming from a little bit of depth here, a nice move back in, however, gets the ball into the Reutinger hands, Reutinger's hands. She's a two-time All-State Wisconsin player. Ball coming across here, great work from Rank. A little show to the outside, but Smolik's going to hang on to it. Tackled by three of the Lady Mustangs. Mustangs putting the pressure on as ever around the breakdown. Able to take it away is Hamilton. Looking for just a little forward run. Players isolated. She's going to have to work that one back. They continue to work to this outside. Strelo looking for a couple of runners. Finds one. Nice hand up there. That's Niebler. Niebler takes that one in. Eagle players are right over the top of that. Referee says it's fine. Back in Eagle High School's hands. Nice break across the midfield. Cannot completely step away. Hamilton looking to take this one. Player seemed to have pushed it on the ground. Referee is going to stop for an injury and possibly a penalty here. All right, with some big hits coming in here. Darian, let's take a look. We love the big hits. We're all about the violence here. We don't want <laughs> solutions. We want chaos. We see here again, we were talking about how we're making it really easy for the defense to just be able to come up. These one runners who are tucking the ball automatically, not looking for the option to pass. We see a little bit of ball movement there, but they're doing such a good job of smothering the ball, not giving Hamilton the option to move it wide. Looks like there might have been a penalty call, though, in favor of Hamilton. And now they'll have the penalty after getting some pretty brutal hits dished to them from the Lady Mustangs. Yeah, on that last breakdown, the uh, Hamilton had clearly stolen the ball, and the, the person who was tackled knocked it backwards again on the ground. So pretty clear penalty there, and here comes Hamilton facing this big, strong defense of the Lady Mustangs. And he has to take that, his rank has to take that one in. Relo moves it across, looking for some runners, gets it up to Reutinger. Reutinger puts a pass out, but another big tackle in the midfield from Eagle High School. Off they come, nice run up the side there by Friedrich. Nice ball back, but it's spilled forward by Lassiter. Referee, I think says she held on to it, so she's probably okay. Ripped away again by the Lady Mustangs, Lady Mustangs, across the 50 meter line. What breaks? Their runners are just powerful and ready to go at all times. Nice little break from the number nine. Petzinger, freshman for this team. Put it back yet again. Looking for some space and finding it. Here come the Lady Mustangs. Players a little bit isolated. Eventually going to get taken down is Allington, but moves the ball back across in the hands of Jordan LeBeau. Coming across they are, looking for some runners. 
The fence well across for Hamilton. They're gonna come back here through Petziger. Hamilton again working over this one pretty well. Digging it out at the back. Ball has been turned over. And back to Hamilton. They're inside their 22. They get the ball up to Litsky. One of the seniors on this Hamilton High School team. Sussex, Wisconsin-based high school. Ball across. They're going to go with the kick. Looking down the left-hand side of the field for them. It rolls back over Leone there. It's rolling towards the try line, but great work to keep it in. Gets it out to a waiting teammate. Good pressure coming on, but a nice couple of steps there. Ball eventually taken down by Madison Serta. Looking for some big runs. Come to Lady Mustangs. That's Olivia Woods. Nice steps across. They're out at the 40 meter line. Another Woods on the seam. Two seniors. Ball coming across to a waiting pod here. Not able to get a tip pass away. They're going to recycle this one and continue to come to this side as Allington at 10 gets away from one. She's got one to beat. She's headed for the line. Can't she get around? Well held right there, but able to reel her way through. That is Haley Arrington, the junior from Eagle High School, it touches down at the girls' high school single school championships. Allington just did an amazing job. That's just an individual effort for the try. She looked up and recognized the space, gave a little bit of a show and go, and just backed herself around the corner. Not often do you really see a fly half make their way into the try zone, but it's because they've got the ball handling skills. We see the attack up, the punch up is always good from the Lady Mustangs. Right here, we see a little bit of disconnect around the breakdown. She steps around there, cuts back inside, Throws the dummy just as a way to kind of throw the defender off of their rhythm here. We see the fend come around and the spin move out. We're already seeing the gap pretty blatant between the breakdown and that first defender. The cutback inside buys her a little bit of time. She needs the time and the space here. Somebody's coming across to try and make that hit from Hamilton, but she doesn't need it. Getting the separation to work around, running away from the defender when you're isolated. It gives you a little bit of time, but... Right there is just the sheer determination. The spin move boxes out, gets right in for a try. Well deserved for the Lady Mustangs. Carly Arrington, that one it rolls back around. Good kick from the Lady Mustangs. More points on the board. Not enough can be said about the need for you to run away from that last defender in 15s. As we break the line, it's so important to try and get away, not try and take the contact. It's all about buying yourself some time when you're isolated. And that's exactly what they did really well in that player in Arlington. All back over the heads, picked up by Woods. Woods shows. Take a couple to bring her down. Ball coming across. Little step back in from one of these backline players. Heikman. At their own 22. They have a couple of waiting runners there. A little tip pass goes in. Able to shift the point of contact just enough to gain some ground. Good work again. Hamilton trying to get in over this one. They have been fairly adept at stealing some balls in this first half. Down 26 to nil here in Cottage Grove, Wisconsin, just outside of Madison. And there's a wonderful rugby weekend. Ball coming back across. Little chip forward this time. It's going to go right to one of the wingers for this Hamilton rugby team. Players from the Lady Mustangs coming right over that one. Ball's been taken cleanly. They're over their own 40 meter line there. Gained a little ground on that one eventually. Move this one into the middle of the field there and just reset. Look what they have out wide. You see the Hamilton players calling for more defenders out on the side. 
Here they go with the numbers. Big rush there, but has to step back in. Olivia George put the pressure on. But having to hang on to it. A big break coming here for the Lady Mustangs. Lady Mustangs get that one up. Keep it alive. Good work there. That's Allie Blackburn taking that one in. The junior ball comes across. In the hands of Wood. She has been electrifying in this game so far. There's one of the try scorers. That's Leone. She's holding a touch. Looking back here for a line out. But that is going to be the end of our first half here of this fifth place matchup. It has been all eagle on the scoreboard so far, but Hamilton's showing some good strength. We're going to come back with second half action in just a couple of minutes. play with sticks, bats, or gloves. We don't wear shoulder pads or helmets. We keep playing when it hurts. And we leave everything on the field. What we wear must be built for our day.
Club High School Single School Championship for Girls High School Rugby here at Cottage Grove, Wisconsin, the Madison United Rugby Complex playing host here. This is the fifth place matchup where the Eagle High School Lady Mustangs from Idaho lead the Hamilton Rugby High School Rugby team from Wisconsin. In this fifth place matchup, we are underway. It's going to be Hamilton running from left to right on your screen as they kick off there to the Lady Mustangs who are in a good lead, a couple of strong players, good structure. John Broker with Darian Lovelace bringing you the action all day. A knock on by Hamilton, by, excuse me, by Eagle is going to give a great attacking position here to Hamilton in this half. Hamilton, Darian, a lot of work to do. Right, but you couldn't have asked for a better way to start the second half. Center scrum right on the 22. It gives you the ability to set the tone here early on for Hamilton. They need to try and get a score on the board against the Lady Mustangs. Ball nearly taken away, but comes straight out. Hamilton, this interesting tactic of putting it in from the tight head side. Very interesting tactic. Yeah, you've been putting this one in. Ball comes out, they're gonna go to that left-hand side rank. Puts a little switch back in. Good run coming from Strilo. One of the couple on the team here. Strilo family. Well represented. Ball comes up looking for some space back in. That defense outside from this Lady Mustangs team has just been tough. As Olivia Woods goes in illegally. So it's going to be a penalty here for this Hamilton High School team. Hamilton. The ball to Ronnie Reutinger. Ball up as they continue to move. Strilo, Grace this time, takes that one in. Ball there to Rank. Rank takes it into contact. Lady Mustangs trying to take that one away. Working tight here is the Hamilton rugby team. Martinez takes that one in. Players up and over. Men are looking for some space. Gets the ball up to Reutinger. She takes in the contact again. Ripped away legally by the Lady Mustangs. It's one of the woods. Who else would it be during this game? As ball gets tossed back over the top there. As a player not really waiting for it. It's in the try zone. We're going to come back to a goal line dropout possibly here. But if they brought it back in themselves, it might go to Hamilton. Yeah, understanding that sometimes you're in the way of the passing lane makes it so that you want to get out of the way. But the best way to do that is to simply just take a step back rather than hitting the deck. Still <laughs> makes you a viable option. Um, but unfortunately, they really don't do themselves any favors here. Still pinned down in the sun. It looks yeah. like the ball yeah. is kind of bobbled down here. Yeah, and the goal line drop doesn't work terribly well that time. They're going to have to kick that one away or the Mustang. Just throw their own 22-meter line into the hands of Haley Manessis, another Wisconsin All-State player on the wing. They try to move the ball across. A good defense. You can see it across the field there from the Lady Mustangs as they nearly picked that one away, but illegally. Referee says not rolling away. But Hamilton in this second half will have a penalty just outside the 22 of Eagle. Olivia George moves that one across field, looking for some width here. It's available if they can get the ball out there. Do they have a space around the outside? Peyton Krenz, Peyton Krenz holding the touch. And the Eagle High School ball. And Eagle, the Lady Mustangs are going to go quick here. Kick is up, kick is just outside the 22 this time. Not gaining a ton of space on that, but moving forward just bit by bit as the ball back in the Nessus hands. It's uh, back here, we have a high tackle advantage against the Lady Mustangs. Martinez in contact yet again. Ball up there to Ronnie Reutinger. Demon gets that one up. Olivia George met strongly. Nice work there as Scarlett Sereno, the freshman, weaves her way in for a couple of meters. Hamilton, see where they decide to go with this. Player in, just a bit in the wrong there. Litsky. 
Slowing down the ball well of the Lady Mustangs. They have been in consistently over that ball quickly as they try to move to the wing. Good defense coming up yet again. And Mel can't find her way through. A penalty again against Eagle High School. Just unfortunate for them, just not getting the reward that they want there. While they're doing a good job of making their way into the space, it's important to try and pull back on the ball rather than continuing to go mm. forward when you're in the breakdown. Causes you to not get those diving over penalties, but Hamilton now on the run. Grace Strilo makes a big break there through that defensive line. Again, excellent work from this Eagle team. Such good turnovers from them right there. Looks like it was LeBeau that got in like out with that one. They're inside their 22. The last few times down there, they have kicked the ball away and not into touch. Not really gained that much on it. Let's see what they decide to do this time. This time they go towards the sideline. Again, fielded by Hamilton. They're not finding the touch that they need. Ball comes across a rank. Has to take that one in. Ball up into the hands of Krenz. We got to the wing this time. Olivia George taken out along the sideline there. It's going to be ball to Eagle. Looks like there might be a player down over on the far sideline. Again, <laughs> Hamilton is really showing a lot of promise, though, here. They're continuing to break the line, just not able to get those finishing plays because of how well the Lady Mustangs do a good job of getting into the breakdown and holding their weight. Lots of turnovers resulting in possession going back in favor of the Lady Mustangs. Hamilton still have a little bit of time, but not a lot of answers. We, we see take here a look at some of the, the tries and hits in this game. Go ahead, Darian. Just the players getting kind of caught flat-footed there. The Eagles are just so good about moving the ball into space and cutting back inside, changing the angle, working the defenders, and the celebrations. We see here the go forward whenever they're in the breakdown leads to big, massive plays such as this one. They look up, they recognize the space quickly, those big straightening runs, they're met heavily by Hamilton defense, but it's whenever they're in open play, Hamilton just not able to get any hands on them because they're so good about individually separating themselves away. Here we see Hamilton show a little bit of promise, but big hits. The Lady Mustangs can also dish some massive hits back. Hamilton just attacking that same space and the Lady Mustangs really are adapting so well and it just is leading to massive turnovers. Hamilton is just not able to think of anything right now against the Lady Mustangs. I even feel those hits up here. So I can only imagine <laughs> how Hamilton is feeling. Mustang team. Exactly. Just the Stallions, basically, in other terms, if you look at it. Sounds like we've got a player who's back up and going. We still have a little bit of time left in this fifth place match for the high school teams. And after this fifth place match, we're going to bring you the third place Catholic Memorial versus Columbia Central, followed by the championship between Divine Savior Holy Angels and Rocky Mountain. Ball up there from Eagle. That one a bit messy at the end, but knocked on initially. We have a knock on there from Hamilton. They're going back for a scrum, according to the referee. Hamilton really are going to have to up the communications, feed off of each other, and get a try on the board. We saw in our last match for the seventh place one, the scoreline difference was a massive. While this one isn't as substantial, it's still about the morale for Hamilton. Can they get another score on the board? Reese Woods makes a big break up that right hand side. Reese Woods at number eight has been devastating to this Hamilton defense. And shows it right there. A little break coming that time from Blackburn. Hamilton rips that one away. However, good counter ruck work. 
Players coming across. Rosa Martinez makes a little pass. Players coming back into the heart of that Lady Mustangs defense. Not the most well-advised move. Now looking a little bit to the outside, trying to work their way with a run around the outside. Not going to work there as Eichmann is putting in the big hit that time. Lady Mustangs driven backwards again. Lines up in their hands. Good turnover. Eventually they get that one to the ground. Carly Arrington pushes that one away into the hands of Lucille Taylor, one of the sophomore players in this team in the front row. Nice little move and step back in. Good defense, but Serda got a hold of that one. Serda tries to offload it, but it's going to come back into the hands of Hamilton. The initial knock on there from Eagle High School. After you've seen a couple of knock ons. And spotted a That's Hamilton knock on first. Definitely a BOGO on the knock-ons here. We see the Lady Mustangs trying to work it into the space after getting a little bit of a break. Hamilton just gets swung around. She loses her feet. Ball goes forward. It's a tit for tot here. Knock-on looks like it will go in favor of the Lady Mustangs right on the five outside of their try zone. Woods moves that one out. They've got a couple of runners coming in. Handoff there. Working at the outside. Is the space available? Looking for the try zone. Not quite getting there is one of their replacements in Brooklyn Johnson, but a pick and go. They're going to wind up in the try zone. Another five points here for this Lady Mustangs team. We'll get that number for you. Looks like it was the number 13 on the Lady Mustangs. That is Kylie Heikman. I believe she was the one that was able to dot it down jordan labloyo there it is that's the one that was able to dot it down for the try for the lady mustangs but it was just heads up play a really so, slow fold from hamilton we see here the defenders are already beat around the outside they get picked up right here she's about a meter outside but it's this heads up play the ruck looks good but nobody folds it's very very late for hamilton she comes across but when you're that close to the try line You've got to work the numbers. We see here the fend. It's LeBlue that's able to wrap around here. She gets this try because she follows her pass. One of the most fundamental skills in rugby. It leads to moments like this when you follow through. Pick is up, goes through the sticks. Lady Mustangs with more points on the board. Oh, converts that one. Well done. Are we taking a look at it here? Just a really good job. Uh, and it's a heads up play. She recognizes it so quickly. It almost looks like she knew. Goes ahead and plows over for a try. A team's there to celebrate, but it looks like they expect that from a player like LeBlue. Hamilton to kick off once again. Second half, 33 nil. This Eagle team leads. They may have knocked that one on there. Referee says yes, they have. Be a scrum here for Hamilton. Hamilton now with the scrum. Again, we talked about how important it is to stay in this game. Though it looks like the Lady Mustangs are going to take away this game. Hamilton, this is the end of their season. This is what they've worked so hard to accomplish. You've only got about 10 minutes left. Absolutely lose your mind here and completely have fun with the game in this last 10. Ball works its way back. Good shove coming in from this Lady Mustangs team. It squirts out. Referee says, let's play. Comes back into the hands of Eagle High School. Eagle High School they can capitalize on it. They're off their own 22. Nice little line break coming on there as they continue to move forward. Step out and step back in. Got the ball to the wing here. A little bobble creeps its way in from Johnson. Battle for the ball ensues. Hamilton working their way to try to get over this one and able to turn it over yet again. They're going from defense to offense. They're taking just a little flat. Going to have to reset their offensive structure here. And here they come. Good work there by Natalie Lassiter, the senior. They're just outside the 22. Ball up there to Sereno. Oof, big 
Counter ruck coming in from one of the woods. Comes back up there to Friedrich. And Hamilton is still on the move here. Comes out there to rank. He's looking for a runner. Ball slips out the back, but taken again by Strelo. And looking for some width here. Comes Hamilton. Here's some speed coming. Josiah Torres. Josiah Torres gets free. And Josiah Torres across the line. Touches it down. Five points for Hamilton. And Josiah Torres have not seen her be able to unleash that speed today. Finally does and gets five points for it. Torres, I uh, feel like she might have heard it up in the booth. That this is your time to completely lose your mind and showcase your ability. Torres completely backed herself there, the senior. Hamilton has needed somebody to light a match underneath them. And this is the speed we were talking about. Absolutely cracks the whip, rounds the corner. The Lady Mustangs have been so fast throughout the day, but we see Torres absolutely beat three defenders. They try and come across to stop her, but this is such a well-deserved try for Hamilton. Unfortunately, they kept on trying to string phases together and just weren't able to get that last little bit. This is a massive try for them. So we're nearing the end of the second half and the close of this game. Just important for the heart of the game to continue to push on, and it's well worth it for Torres. Rank to try to convert here, cut the lead down just a little bit more. That one is up and that one is good. It is 35 to 7. And we'll take a look again here, just backing herself. She saw the three defenders up there and just completely had full faith. The biology of belief is something absolutely crazy when you want it bad enough. We see the energy and the determination. She wants to try and work it to the middle, but it really didn't matter. Conversion was up and good. And finally, Hamilton gets some points on the board. Kick there from Eagle, bounces back for them fortuitously. Back across the forward there. Hamilton, however, bravely diving right in, takes that one back. Little head of steam at the moment, looking for a couple more good runs. Martinez, she has been very good all day. Eamon looking for a runner. And they keep coming back into a very strong interior defense of the Lady Mustangs. Well, back out there to Lassiter. Lassiter gets to the wing. Player hauled in the touch over there. And quickly they go again to Eagle High School. They certainly want to play. And getting the most out of this fifth place matchup here at Single school, high school championships. A little break there, a little show, and across they go. This could be LeBeau yet again. And it is Jordan LeBeau across the line. Try awarded, good, good, good tight, good break. Nice try for the Lady Mustangs. LeBeau again is just making waves for her team. She is just so attracted to the try zone and finds her way there so well. We saw her attack the defensive line there and a big collision happened there for her. She just continues to grind through the contact. We see the ball movement come through. LeBeau attacks, throws a little bit of the dummy, just absolutely dishes off a Hamilton player, throws the fen, gets that little bit of separation. We see some players coming behind. Hamilton again with the chase down but they tackle her right into the try zone, moves the ball away from the pressure area, runs away from the last defender, creates a little bit of gap. It's the speed and the finish. Hamilton trying to stop that try, but it didn't matter. LeBeau gets it down for another try. Just so determined, so fast, so quick, and so powerful. The Lady Mustangs have been this whole match. That one's not going to make it, so we're going to be at 40 to 7 as the second half rolls on here again. After this, we're going to bring you the third place game followed by the championship. So, Catholic Memorial versus Columbia Central. Top team versus the Tennessee team in that third place game. All this action on the rugby network throughout the day. The crowd continuing to build here at the Madison United Rugby, rugby Club and Complex out here in beautiful Cottage Grove.
Uh, slips off the foot of one of the Eagle players. Push back in. Back here for should be a line out to Hamilton. Kickoffs becoming a common. Say to go out. And you're right. Kickoffs have just become a common theme throughout the whole entire weekend of not being able to field them cleanly and ball going out. It's just an automatic turnover. But looks like referee didn't see the tap. Or it might have been a different angle from up here, so it'll be a Lady Mustangs throw in. Hamlet goes up a little early, but ball comes back here. They have a waiting pot in the middle. And a little dummy line around the back there. Cleaned up by the Lady Mustangs. They're going to have to go back the other way. Playing with fire a little bit here, running from inside their own 22. Now they go for just a little chip there inside their own 40, but the ball is going to come back to this Hamilton rugby team, and that's the danger runner, Josiah Torres there. We've seen Torres make the try on before, and she may be headed there again. Torres, her own person to kick to Torres, featuring in the second half. Great try. Number 13, Josiah Torres, at your second. You can hear the celebrations all around for this player right here, Torres from Hamilton. This senior has now gotten the only two tries for Hamilton to her name, and it's because of her speed. I mean, she really is taking this team on her back. We see the hugs all around because she's really putting on an individual performance. Hamilton just haven't been able to slide in these tries, Torres. Heads up, cuts back inside on Woods. That's no easy feat. Absolutely throws her around like a log. Cuts back inside. Is continuing to pump through the legs. Again, the Lady Mustangs have been so fast. That's why they've gotten all of these tries. But Torres, is she faster than these Hamilton players? She does such a beautiful job. Again, gets it right in between the sticks. A hop, skip, run, and a jump for her really just leading from the front for this Hamilton side in the last little bit. That's just sheer heart and determination and love for the game. Well done to Torres. It's really just been two touches of the ball for her today and two tries with any appreciable space. What a dangerous player she is. Just fantastic to watch run. So well balanced. That one goes up and it's good. It's gonna be 40 to 14 here. Second half of this. 2023 high school championship. Darren, let's take another look. Yeah, the Lady Mustangs try and escape out of this end by kicking. Ball doesn't really get close to touch. She cuts back inside from Woods. Get away from that big tree of a woman. We're not messing around. She cuts right off again and continues to just power through. We see the arms reach out to try and get Torres, but she's just so fast. It's not even a question where she's going to end up. It's right in between the sticks. What a mm. try. Kick off to Hamilton, gets knocked backwards. So they're gonna be cleanly able to get this one. See what they decide to do. They're starting to get a little ahead of steam sometimes here. Ball gets to Rosa Martinez. Martinez hit with a trademark Lady Mustangs battering. Ball coming back here, right at the 22. Hamilton again moving that ball across. Looking for some space through the middle, just across the 22 to go through Cremel. Lady Mustangs in and over it right away. Let's see who's going to come up with this one. It looks as if it will be Eagle High School. Eagle High School. Lady Mustangs and another opportunity. Get the ball up there in the hands of Jimenez Tenya. Stock more on this team. Ball bobbled just a bit there. Referee spots it. We're going to go back here for a scrum to Hamilton. Not very common for the Lady Mustangs to commit penalty, to commit infractions like that with a ball that's kind of hit the deck. With a ball that kind of hits the deck. We're just seeing the fatigue kind of start to set in here as we enter into the last 10 minutes of this match from the Lady Mustangs and Hamilton actually looking very fit and really strong here. Hamilton pouring it out at the end, it's their scrum. 
Going to go off to the left-hand side. A ball gets a little flat, but that's the player again. Had a hold of it before. Cannot get away from Reese Woods this time. Sayed Torres. Ball taken away this time by the Lady Mustangs. Got some runners across the field. Just put a little linking pass in there to a pot of forwards. Hamilton again able to steal this one away. It's been a great job by them. Team was looking to go. That one spilled forward. It's a knockout advantage here to Eagle. Referee's going to whistle it up as nothing's happening. That one was automatic disappointment there. Just looked like a little bit of a slip there for the Hamilton player when she went to play it out. Just unfortunate knock on there. And the Lady Mustangs really don't need many rewards here. We see here the attack she's taking it into contact so there's obviously going to be a contest at the breakdown big contest coming in between those two players she tries to work to get it out of there slips wants to go herself but then unfortunately just loses sight and falls Whitney Pilling in at scrum half for this Lady Mustangs team. And the junior. Ball taken away from the Hamilton High School team. Hamilton High School. On the move here, here's Torres. She can find open space, she's good. Hands off one, goes into some contact. Able to wriggle her way free. Eventually taken down across the field. And who else but Reese Woods. Back for a penalty, shrill blast from the referee there. They're coming in from the side from Eagle, and Torres is almost away again. What a hit, Torres. We've seen Woods and her continue this battle. She breaks through one, but Woods gets under the ball, under the body, throws her around. That is just a textbook tackle. Puts body right into dirt, and they're back off to the races. And another Oof. big hit. Huge hit comes in there from Eagle. The tackler went off their feet. How hard that one was. Ball comes out to the wing. They're looking for a little room here. Here's some speed. Speed coming around the outside from Menezes. Good contact coming in again. Ball taken away from Eagle. Eventually pushed in the touch. And back here is going to be a line out for Hamilton. And let's take another look at these big ones there in. John, you can even hear the hype coming in from the stands. Everybody's excited. This big hit over on the far right side and then the same passage of play. Woods just absolutely putting bodies into the dirt. And then somebody else says they would like a taste of that too. An aerial move that we have yet to see. This might be a first for all of us here. The big hit coming in, her own momentum almost that's makes the her other, feet touch that's her That's the twin woods. <laughs> the other that's woods. the red woods Listen. right there. <laughs> they are oh. killing it. What a game we have going on here. Power. You never see a, a tackler deplete themselves very often. But that happened there is a big, big power. Keeps coming in. Hamilton fighting for some more points. Eagle fighting for fifth place here. What a matchup we have coming on. Just stay with us all day. It's going to continue to grow. Headed towards that 130 Eastern, 1230 Central Championship game. But here they come. Allie Blackburn, the junior, who was that one across. Across they come, they've got some runners out back. They want a little show, a little go. It's LeBeau. She's been across the line several times, and she's again. Jordan LeBeau, what a try. LeBeau contributes to the team in her own way after her team obliterated this Hamilton attack with these big hits that were coming in from both of the woods sisters almost like the dark forest it's not a place that you want to run into and they are just dishing these lethal hits but LeBeau let's talk about her play she has been everywhere all over the pitch today Woods of course towers right over top this defensive pressure can she do it again just chopping down trees we see here the attack it's the turnover to move it away from the pressure area two passes and it's away but then it's the show and go Two hands on the ball to still manipulate defenders. Tucks it underneath the arm, grinds out until the end. Uh, she's a little bit exhausted after that. She's been running to the try zone all day. What a good phase of play for the Lady Mustangs. 
the bow. Anytime that you get a turnover, we want to move it away from the pressure area quickly. They do that so well. That's a team effort. And then the individual strength, the perfect picture for the bow. The kick is good. They continue to move on after some scintillating tries from Torres. Eagle High School back on. We move on with this fifth place matchup. A big hit of this game. Some great highlights for all these teams. Hamilton ready to play again. They put that one down. Goes 10, just the line, rolling towards touch. Hamilton player grabbed it and was taken out. So it's going to be a line out for Eagle. Hyping it up here. We're getting into the last two minutes of the match. Again, all teams have worked extremely hard to get here. We're playing for the fifth and sixth place match here. The Lady Mustangs have shown an incredible performance against Hamilton, but still a lot of energy left for these players as they dish out big effects for the last minute. Continuing on here are Eagle. Eagle get the ball back. Happy to move it across field. Little wrap around looking for an outside runner, doesn't materialize. They're eventually gets themselves to ground, so Hamilton's gonna have to move away. Oh, it's coming back in towards the contact area. Will they find the width eventually? Demon or the killing moves it out and an interception here. What work from Megan Rank. She just sees the pass coming. He's going to touch down a try. And Hamilton getting some rewards here. Excellent work. Hamilton, the, the scoreboard might not show it. The individual, the individual tries that they've had have been extremely impressive, showing that when they have their moments, they're beautiful and they're spawn on. Just unfortunately weren't, exec, weren't able to execute it because of big counter hits and big hits coming in from the Eagles. From the Lady Mustangs, they do a good job of moving the ball into space, but Hamilton finally reading the defensive really well. They cut into that space, absolutely cherry picked that ball right out of the air, get it under the sticks and get another try. It won't get them really any closer to the Lady Mustangs on the scoreboard, but it's really all about enjoying your last minute of your season. There he was, and our referee whistles for the end of the game. Your fifth place team in an absolutely fantastic physical match is Eagle High School from Idaho. The Lady Mustangs proudly coming off the field. We are going to come back in just a little bit with a third place matchup. It is going to be Catholic Memorial versus Columbia Central. Stay with us. We'll be back with that rugby action in just a few.
god, I looked way too good. Play with sticks, bats, or gloves. We don't wear shoulder pads or helmets. We keep playing when it hurts. And we leave everything on the field. What we wear must be built for our game. Kate Zachary, a uh, member of the USA Women's National Team, as well as a current player over in England, uh, training with the Exeter Chiefs. Just want to take a moment and wish you all good luck this weekend in the National Championships. It's a really exciting opportunity, and I hope you all go really well and can raise the cup at the end of this. Um, just remember while you're out there, I think the biggest piece of advice I try to keep in mind is the minute you step across those white lines, it's the same game you've been training for. It's the same game you've been playing week in and week out. So there's no extra pressure this weekend. Just go out there, trust your instinct, back yourself, smile a lot. And most importantly though, celebrate every moment with your teammates. Uh, it's a huge success. You've done an amazing job to get here. Now just enjoy yourselves. All the best. Hi everyone, I'm Elena Olson from the USA Sevens team. And I just wanted to wish you all a huge good luck for this weekend. Um, I started playing in college, so it's really awesome seeing younger players get the opportunity to compete and express themselves. Um, so I hope you go out there this weekend with a lot of love and um, just give it everything you've got and win or lose, uh, find a way to grow as a player. Hey guys, my name is Sahir Hamden. I'm a, a member of the Life University Women's Rugby Team as well as the USA 15's national team. And I just wanted to wish you guys good luck this weekend. And I wanted to remind you guys to just be as present as you can be and take in the moment. You don't get a lot of opportunities like this. So good luck this weekend. Have fun. Rugby is a very accepting sport. I wasn't embarrassed about my body or anything. People really welcome you and actually like take your uh, strengths and weaknesses and work with you to like make you a better person and player. You hit each other and then you're friends. Yeah. 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 Um, I really like the camaraderie of it and like the game is just so physical and it's fun. Definitely try it. Like you maybe you don't think you're the strongest, but once you go out and like you hit someone, that adrenaline is so amazing. What got you into rugby? So I was like fouling out in all my basketball games, so I was like, why not try rugby out? <laughs>
about your experience with RCT so far? Well, I think uh, my experience can be best uh, described as really fun and community bonding because I meet so many new people playing the sport I love. I play, I wrestle and I play football and there's nothing like rugby. You know? Yeah, everybody that I've ever met that tries rugby just comes to one practice has ended up liking it. And I asked her like what it was and she said like full contact, like same rules, guys and girls, and I didn't believe her. And then she was like, oh, come out to our practices. And I did, and I was like, oh yeah, I want to play. And then I started playing. And it was really fun. It's just, I don't know, it's just a game that I love. It's pretty fun though, I don't know, I just love everything about it. So, laid back atmosphere of it, we all be friends on the field and off the field. Uh, just the bond and the vibe from everybody is nice and builds, builds like, a lot of character. You should play it. Play rugby. That's it. <laughs>
Ball back across here from Catholic Memorial in the middle of the field. Closed down by the Lady Lions defense. Lady Lions working their way around the outside there. Able to reset it here. Mazurchik gets it out into the midfield. Here again, they're moving just a little flat at the moment. Our Catholic Memorial going to have to get out of steam. They're out near the touch line. Lady Lions able to take them down. Players are looking to get onside here. They're going to keep this one tight. Big tackle comes in from Columbia Central. Half Memorial, dummy runner, balls in behind. Is a space going to open up here? Good run by Audrey Frieda. She's a senior. We're in Ireland with Eagle Impact Rugby. Ball spilled forward that time by Mary Grace Panay. Going to come back here for a penalty for offsides against Columbia Central. Vercek's going to take that one quick. And here comes Catholic Memorial now getting their head of steam. Ayuda Gairi, MVP for her team in the fall season. One of the captains in this team takes it into contact. Run coming in here from Cassie Lewandowski. All across. Mazurchek gets that ball up in the air. Back across. Ayuri puts in the connecting pass. Rolls over again. They're just taking the ball a little flat out wide here. Going to have to fix that. Ali Anmacht. And there, but another penalty against Columbia Central. Mazurchek off on her own. She's going to need some help to get this ball back. And it receives it eventually. Ball comes across here. Gyrie playing that sort of distributor. Second distributor roll a little bit there. Ball gets to Dorothy Newman, a first-year player. Was a rookie of the year, wearing number eight. Ball coming across for, uh, uh, sorry, that's Wilson. Penalty this time for players coming in from the wrong side against Cash Memorial. Good intent on both sides here, Darian. What an opening three and a half minutes. Yeah, Columbia Central, the Lady Lions finally getting an opportunity to attack out after it's been all Catholic Memorial here at the beginning of this match. Continual phases here. We see the ball movement try and happen. We're moving it away to the left, but this is the line break that really started it up for them. The Lady Lions were just impeccable. The run around, the hair's just flying in the wind. We see the come across happen. The effort is there, but already we're seeing the Lady Lions off to the races here early, but a penalty now gives the ball right back to Catholic Memorial. Crossing penalty there. Ball gets in the hands of Newman. Newman barrels her way into that Lady Lions defense across the front to Gairi. Ball up to Ellie Hansen. Ellie Hansen, a little senior. Ball comes across into a waiting Maddie Kozmoski's hand, but she's well tackled by the Lady Lions. A little space nearly opens up in the midfield there, getting ahead of steam at this point. Cassie Lewandowski, the first year player, takes that one. A referee whistles here. We have a knock on by Catholic Memorial. It's going to be a scrum here for the Lady Lions. Lady Lions are now able to get the ball back into possession after Catholic Memorial was showing a little bit of promise there, but it's just having to get deeper whenever you're that second to last attacker. It doesn't matter if your wing holds their depth out on the outside. If you don't buy yourself time, we're seeing Catholic Memorial get kind of caught in that no man's zone there, just not able to get it out wide, which is exactly what it looks like their game plan is meant to do. Free kick here for Lady Lions. Lady Lions gonna take, try to take that one quickly. The referee's gonna bring the back. Didn't see what the offense was there. Lady Lions are gonna go off a tap move here, send a couple of runners in. Good work by Shaw Davis to take that one into contact. Half Memorial trying to drive over it. They are there. Looks like they're coming in the side for me from uh, Columbia Central, but I was going to go to Catholic Memorial, so they are on their way. Gairi again, awful busy in this first six minutes. Obviously, a key member of this Catholic Memorial team. Ball coming out here, a little delayed pass. Well done. Ball in the hands of Audrey Frida. Zarchik again. Now there's a little space there. Just about the five meter line of this Columbia Central defense. 
Good opportunity here coming for Catholic Memorial to put some points on the board, but defense pushing them backwards just a bit. Carol Workman in there pushing them backwards. And it's just staying a little patient here for the Lady Lions. Player released that eventually. Players coming in, look legal to me. But the player waited long enough, but referee says the penalty, so it's gonna be Catholic Memorial ball here. Zercheck goes quick. The referee is gonna whistle and tell everybody to hold on here. Not 10. Zercheck, they're at the five meter line. Will first play this game go to Catholic Memorial in this third place matchup. It has been an exciting seven and a half minutes of non-stop action between two attacking teams here as the ball comes up to Ellie Hanson. Ellie Hanson looking at that line, but can't quite find it. The senior the pop up ball to Gairi. She's near the try line. She is not in, however. Player has released. It's going to come back to Calvin Morrow. Diving over to check And Mazurchik, the captain, plays in the Midwest Thunderbirds. Scores the first five points of this third place game. What a contest. Mazurchik literally used her whole body to score that try there. After a hard eight minutes of really back and forth play between the two sides within the Lady Lions and Catholic Memorial, we finally see that last ditch effort. It's the dive and the extension, the low body height. That's textbook whenever you're at the white line and you're running the pick and goes. A lot of times we'll bring our body height up, but she just gets underneath at the ankles. Nobody can get underneath that ball. That results in the first try of the match, a very well earned try for them. And can she convert it as well? Zerchek. Also a member of the girls lacrosse team, a captain of that team as well. Wisconsin All-Star senior, a very, very promising player here. And that kick is good. So 7-0. Catholic Memorial leads a very dangerous Columbia Central Lady Lions team here in this third place matchup. Well, high school nationals. We're taking a look here, Darian. Yeah, we just see the sea of blue. This is the third and the fourth place match. Not exactly a championship final, but still means it to everybody. All of the same. Right now, it's just a matter of pride here. We've got a lot more time left to go here in this consolation match, but it's already showing so much physicality. Both teams are about ready to give us a show here in Madison, Wisconsin. Shot of Rhino, one of the sponsors here, using the balls for this event. Ball goes up, Catholic Memorial back in possession at their own 40 meter line. Columbia Central be looking to get some points of their own as the ball is attempted to be ripped away. Brought in by Kazmoski. Nice break there from Gairi. She has been all over the place so far today. And the defense starting to slow down just a little bit from these on-rushing on Catholic Memorial players. Have to put some more line speed on. A little wrap around on the outside there. You see Wilson takes it into contact, spills the ball forward. Should be Columbia ball here, and it does come up into the hands. Akinze Burkin. A couple of knock-ons in after that. We're going to come back. Referee spots it here. It looked like Catholic Memorial was trying to run a set piece move there within their backs, but Wilson, as she had a 3v4 and doesn't move the ball. We see here it's the drift across. The dummy switch works really well to pin these defenders. The loop play, you can see them both get pinned, but there's about three attackers outside. Wilson just takes it right into the heart of the Lady Lions team. They're just waiting for the hunt there. Unfortunately, she tries to make up for it with the wayward bobble but still it'll be a turnover in possession at the 50 for the Lady Lions. Lady Lions ball, they have this one in. A little pressure coming on from Catholic Memorial, but ball's back there. 
Number eight has it. They're going to put it off to the left-hand side here. They're going to get it to DeLay O'Neal, the fullback. She's got some move, smooth moves there. Comes around, gets it back to Alicia Harris. And it's in the hands of Workman again. Workman, very hard to bring down. Eventually taken into the tackle. Tia Miller is going to step into the distributor role. Going to get that ball up into the hands of Victoria White. White's going to hand that ball off. It's going to be Corinne Houston making good inroads here off the pick and goes. It is Columbia Central, but referee spots something, whistles it. Just disappointment there for the Lady Lions. They were looking so promising just now here with these big collisions. We see here they take it to the line, dish the fend. Just looks like the player got caught a little bit unaware of the pass. We see the bobble happen. It was off of the player that's behind this attacking play. We see here just the hands it hits, goes in front. It's tried to be regathered by both players, but unfortunate knock on there. Cash Memorial now on the run, just outside their own 22. They're going to send a barreling runner in here on a starter play. to try to gain some ground. They're at their own 40, but they have the width here. Using just that outside edge of the interior defense to put things through. That's Mary Grace Bonnet takes that one in. Nicknamed Scoop by her teammates. Ball comes back to Naya Gairi. And it ripped over, taken away there, it looked like, by Columbia Central. Referee spots it. Back here, it's going to be a scrum here for the Lady Lions. Just over 13 minutes gone. Good attacking position, an opportunity for Columbia Central. We see a little bit of a show and go. She tries to manipulate the defense here, but they do such a good job of getting in there. We see the little hit of the arm rather than the ball. Causes the ball, causes the ball to hit the deck. It's a turnover for the Lady Lions. Catholic Memorial, of course, is swarming in there to get the ball back, but at the 50, a good attacking platform from them in this first half. Columbia Central moves this one off to the right-hand side. They've got a runner streaking out of this. They may not need a good hands away, good break, a barrel into the contact there. What a run from Satya Miller, the senior. It's turned over by Catholic Memorial. As Memorial inside their 22, We're gonna have to make something happen here. Big home hit coming in from Magruder. Memorial looks like stolen this one, have done. Got it up into the hands of one of their players. They've got some runners outside. They could get to that width. Running back for a penalty for a high tackle. They're going to go quick, quick, fine, quick hands by Alicia Harris. Get to the workman. Workman's got five meters to go. Workman's so tough to bring down. The, how they decide to play this one. They've got some runners. Get the ball up into the hands of Valeria Martinez. Martinez gets it away, gets some ground. Resetting this one. We go just a little bit further outside. Brooklyn Duke, Brooklyn Duke. They're just moving across field a little bit. Ball is on the ground. Referee says it's out, so they can play it. Columbia Central plays it. They've got some runners out wide. Let's see what they decide to do with this here. They're going to cut it back in, not looking at that width. And they get to the try line, looking at it right there. Going for the line is Smith. And try awarded. Yeah, Smith. Great work from the winger. And you can see how much it means to this team. The Lady Lions finally getting some points on the board here. 15 minutes into the first half. The signs are being thrown up all around. But we love the hype here. It looked like she was about ready to get heavily met by Catholic Memorial by cutting back in. We see the messy breakdown. Ball gets moved away to the left, moved away yet again. One more pass here to the danger player. She cuts back in. It looks like she's getting ready to rush into a wave of blue. It almost looks like no man's land, but it's the leg drive. And again, the low body height and the dive. When you get to the try zone, we call it scoring the try for a reason. Her speed, the feet, it's the power. And then the dive down low at the end. The celebration all around. Look at how big this crowd is. Is. It means everything to everybody to get here. Well done by the number 14 team. That kick was good, so it should be tied up here in this third place matchup. Half of Memorial to kick off here. It did not get it. 7 5, pardon me. I heard some cheers going up.
Ball up there into Catholic Memorial. To, sorry, into Columbia Central's hands. Columbia Central getting ahead of steam, but passes it back to a Catholic Memorial player. A penalty for a high tackle this time against Columbia Central. Across they come through Gairi. Zerchek slows it down, brings it across. Good run onto it from Wilson. Good hands to get it out into the midfield. Mary Grace Bonet cuts it back in. Big hit coming in on Kozmoski. Players from Columbia Central trying to get in over that ball. The referee gives him the penalty. A good work at the breakdown. Well, well done there. Looks like it was the number nine, Alicia Harris, the senior. Going to play rugby at Davenport in the fall. Great turnover right there. Good ball work. Get the ball out there to Tiara Davis. Ball into the middle of the field. A little bit of a flatter pass there instead of going out back. Players coming through. And that is Alicia Harris. Ball up. Doesn't get to the try score. Is going to be picked up potentially with an advantage here for Cath Memorial. That's Onmok. Onmok looking at the try line. Onmok finds it in the corner. It'll be a tough kick, but they get the five points and extend their lead. Good heads up play from Catholic Memorial. Catholic Memorial making them pay the Lady Lions for a mistake that happens here. The skill level at this high school is just out of this world. As you talked about earlier, John, there are a lot of recruits, it sounds like, that are heading out to go to Davenport. College scouts will definitely be watching this high school championship in order to continue to bring up the women's rugby. But let's talk about this try. It's just the recognition of the quick turnover. It's keeping your head on a swivel and recognizing that you're coming up and going forward on defense. It allows for a simple pickup on, on much. Correct me if I'm wrong, number 11, for her to go ahead and get over a try for Catholic Memorial. I was going on, Mock. She's just a sophomore. Touchdown, a great try. And we've seen a number of players going to Naira throughout the day here. We saw a few going to Davenport. Sacred Heart getting a great player from the fifth place winner from Eagle High School. Another player going to Bowdoin from Catholic Memorial here listed in this. So certainly the NCAA women's varsity programs looking at a lot of these players. Taking a look at the bobble ball. We see the try score from earlier, kind of loose side of the ball, kind of gets caught over her head. She's just not able to gather it. She's already on the ground though, so she's just not able to recover. Catholic Memorial is just swarming over top of the ball and the Lady Lions within their pride just don't seem to have an answer, even though this is just a one try ball game. Columbia Central to kick off. Columbia Central puts it down to Cass Memorial to find some green grass. Defenders are rushing on there. Trying to contest the breakdown. Ball back for Catholic Memorial. Player in and over there from Columbia, but good breakdown work from this Catholic Memorial team. Feed that ball out. And across they go, ball into Maddie Kozmoski's hands. She has to go into contact. Zerchek looking for a runner. Finds Lucy Wilson. Lucy Wilson looking to the wing. They have a little bit of numbers from time to time on that wing. Do this Catholic Memorial team. Something that the Lady Lions are going to have to take a look at. Ball goes in behind a decoy runner. Taken down there as they continue to move off to this left-hand side. Player pinches in again. So they might have an overload, but a huge hit comes in there. Big, big tackles coming from this Lady Lions team as they can. They move the ball a little bit further wider, looking across Cath Memorial. Another big hit from the Lady Lions. Lucy Wilson has to take it in herself, has a couple of big tacklers, but able to wriggle just past the contact line, gaining some momentum here from this team. Gairi steps in a first receiver, all across. Tacklers just coming in a little bit from the outside. 
for this Lady Lions team. Ash Memorial not able to take full advantage of it as of yet. Gairi hangs on to it, shows a little dummy pass there. And again, some ground in her own right, taken down by Brooklyn Duke. Back across is Mazurchek. Runner up back this time. We're looking for the wing, they find it. Does this runner have the pace? Does not, has a couple of big tackles coming in there from the Lady Lions, a little bit of a collision. Their fantastic scrum half is just in the ground, a little bit of bother there. That would be a big loss. Could it be an injury, a little knock on creeps in. Gonna come back for a scrum here through the Lady Lions, great attacking position. Alicia Harris got hit pretty hard back there, the future Davenport University player. See if she gets up and is okay. And yeah, these big hits that are coming in from them, it really just shows their physicality. She's up and moving, but it's their launch that is making it so hard for Catholic Memorial to get anything going. And the launch is going so well for them that it's causing these knock-ons to happen even before we don't see Catholic Memorial really drop the ball down to hands. It's the nerves. They're getting nervous about the big hits. So now the Lady Lions will get a reward and they'll get a scrum right at the 40 down in this end. And Alicia Harris is up. Referee is going to bring us back up here and just make sure this is safe. From here for the Lady Lions, they've got our runner directly out back here. Harris is going to take it herself to get started. She winds her way around one. Hands off another, she's across the 22, looking for a teammate. She finds it in Sataya Miller. Sataya Miller gonna play at AIC in Springfield, Massachusetts in the fall. Ball coming across here, looking for a runner. A little dart back in coming from Liana Edwards. Taken to the ground, Catholic Memorial on defense at their own five meter line, just seven points in it here. See where they decide to go. It looks like Victoria White. Victoria White gonna crash into a couple players right around the five meter line. Nearly turned that one over. Ball is loose, but a penalty for players coming off their feet and going quick as Catholic Memorial. They would love to score a long one here. Mazarchek, certainly the player to do so. She is very quick. Speed of thought, speed of ball when she's going. On the move again at their own 40 meter line is Catholic Memorial. Nearly taken into the try zone. This one turned over. Now it's Lady Lions ball. Yeah, you know, they do from fractured play here. Big break coming. Nice run from Tiana Magruder, the sophomore. Harris comes in, looking at her runners, gonna go off to the left-hand side. Move that one quickly, it bounces back over, but did not go forward. Workman comes in, they settle that one up. Move that one out. Harris is gonna hang on to it, then unload it. Gets a couple of her teammates there, that's Davis. Ball slip back around to Brooklyn Duke. Brooklyn Duke is looking for somebody to pass to. Probably just go to the ground here. And they do. Set up their runners. Ball back up there to Victoria White. Victoria White moves that ball out. Referee spotted it. Knocked on there and whistles. We go back here for initial knock on from Catholic Memorial. So just inside the 40 meter line of this Catholic Memorial team will be a scrum for the Lady Lions. What is daring a fairly evenly matched contest? Very much so. We're just seeing them almost the fatigue start to creep in a little bit now as we enter into the last couple minutes of this first half. It's just really going to be important who can get in one last score before the half, really solidify themselves, make themselves feel confident going into the second half. But we're starting to see some unforced errors happen on early. Who will be the fitter team that can last the whole game? Davis gets it one again. Houston's feet. He's looking for some space and finds it. She's got to find a runner. Gets a ball up into the hands of Jaleo O'Neal. Jaleo O'Neal moves that one back. Good work to get it to the wing there from Casey Crawford. Into contact they go. Casper Memorial trying to disrupt. Just slow it down a little bit. Ball comes back out into the middle of the field. Looking a little pass there was Victoria White. Finally moves it back. Brooklyn Duke is tackled going backwards here. 
You see the 22 meter line of Cash Memorial right there. If they can get some runners here, a little dummy run out the back. Can they get through? They have split the defense there. Keanu Edwards, Keanu Edwards goes around a couple. Keanu Edwards, the junior touches down. And we are two points in it. Kick right in front of the post. Great try after some wonderful rugby there from the Columbia Central Lady Lions. This is exactly what they needed in order to ensure that they were still in this match. The Lady Lions finally catching back up. We are now at 10 to 12. But players like Edwards, they looked so good. Unfortunately, it looks like she might have gotten a little bit of an injury there in the try zone. But we'll look at her try as she gets tended to behind the back pass with that dummy runner running in as the blocker line sets up the space for Edwards. She continues to back herself, rounds the corner. The number 15 for Catholic Memorial comes across, but doesn't have a good angle on her because of her speed. She breaks the line so fast, doesn't allow the time for the number 15 to recover on Catholic Memorial. Pendowski is just not able to fill that in for Edwards. And now with the conversion to come, can the Lady Lions tie up this game? Little time left in this half. We are near the end here. At the memorial to kick off. Hear the Lions cheering section there. I want to get them going before the end of this half. Another score would do them a lot of good. Big run coming in here, taken from the back. Good work there by Valeria Martinez. Player coming with some depth here. A little tip pass out the back. Very fancy. Comes to the ground. That Memorial player has to roll themselves away and is going to get penalized for not doing so quick enough. Dorothy Newman, first year player. These players from Columbia Central just come from a little bit of depth there. Davis or Harris, sorry, goes for the high kick, bounces back over, but they get the knock on out of it. So we're going to come back here for a scrum to the Lady Lions late in this first half. The Lady Lions defensive pressure and their uniform launch really make it so that Catholic Memorial, who is so strong on attack, is just not able to develop something. We saw the pressure come off of that kick chase. She's just not able to field it cleanly. And now the Lady Lions will have a beautiful attacking platform on the 50 with most likely the last play of the game of the first half. Ball back in Harris's hands. He's going to have Corinne Houston. Loves movie westerns. Playing number eight here for this Columbia team. In the hands of Workman. Workman is a tough runner, but she offloads that ball to Santiago. Santiago spills it forward. Workman was on it. Good work gone to not there. Tough little knock on. Yeah, just making sure the player is okay. She kind of landed on her face in the ground there. But knock on from... Columbia Central, so at their own 22, it's going to be a scrum here for the Catholic Memorial High School team. Still a long way to go from them. They've still got about 80 meters worth of space that they've got to get out of. Probably look to exit or gain some field territory. If they're feeling very overzealous, maybe we'll see them attempt for a try to finish out this first half. Beautiful day here in Cottage Grove, Wisconsin. Madison suburb just outside of the capital is great. Madison United Rugby Complex, girls high school, single school championship. They are gonna go for some adventure here. Big break and run comes in there from Audrey Frieda. She has worked her way through all the time and she is also the golf captain of the high school. That run and that play are gonna end our first half. Slight lead here, oh, it's all tied up, pardon me. It's Catholic Memorial and Columbia Central tied at 12. Halftime for third place. Girls High School Single School Championships. We're going to go back with the second half in just a minute.
way too good. play with sticks, bats, or gloves. We don't wear shoulder pads or helmets. We keep playing when it hurts. And we leave everything on the field. What we wear must be built for our day. Kate Zachary, uh, member of the USA Women's National Team, as well as a current player over in England, uh, training with the Exeter Chiefs. Just want to take a moment and wish you all good luck this weekend in the National Championships. It's a really exciting opportunity, and I hope you all go really well and can raise the cup at the end of this. Um, just remember while you're out there, I think the biggest piece of advice I try to keep in mind is the minute you step across those white lines, it's the same game you've been training for. It's the same game you've been playing week in and week out. So there's no extra pressure this weekend. Just go out there, trust your instinct, back yourself, smile a lot, and most importantly though, celebrate every moment with your teammates. Uh, it's a huge success. You've done an amazing job to get here. Now just enjoy yourselves. All the best. Hi everyone, I'm Elena Olson from the USA Sevens team, and I just wanted to wish you all a huge good luck for this weekend. Um, I started playing in college, so it's really awesome seeing younger players get the opportunity to compete and express themselves. Um, so I hope you go out there this weekend with a lot of love and um, just give it everything you've got and win or lose, uh, find a way to grow as a player. Hey guys, my name is Sahir Hamden. I'm a, a member of the Life University Women's Rugby Team as well as the USA 15's national team. And I just wanted to wish you guys good luck this weekend. And I wanted to remind you guys to just be as present as you can be and take in the moment. You don't get a lot of opportunities like this. So good luck this weekend. Have fun. Welcome back. It is all tied up for third place here. Cap Memorial, the Crusaders versus the Lady Lions of Columbia Central. John Broker with Darian Lovelace bringing you this girls high school single school championship. What a third place matchup we have all tied up. Two attacking teams, Darian. The second half should be pure excitement. It's been excitement from the jump. Right now we're tied up 12 to 12. Uh, each team really just showing their athletic capabilities. We've been seeing these long tries after multiple phases of play, these long line breaks, but we've also seen tries that have resulted just because of the defensive pressure and the defensive launch. Both teams are extremely unified, very much connected. Right now, this second half is really going to be a determining factor as to which team can be the most fit and the most resilient. Second half plays in the third and fourth match, especially when you're coming off of a tie game, really are going to require a lot of effort. It'll be an exciting second half, half for us, John. You see Catholic Memorial in the blue and yellow and in the black and gray as the kicking off are the Lady Lions. Alicia Harris is senior. Davenport University player gets set to get us underway. Rolls over 10, nearly knocked forward. Pushed around all over the place. The referee says it went back, so he's going to allow the play go. And Workman almost wound up with that one. She's been a devastating runner for the Lady Lions. Good ball work out of the gates from Kosmoski there. Anybody change any tactics here? Ball ripped away there by the Lady Lions. Good work. They're inside the 40 meter line. Which runner will they look to first here? As they move the one out into the hands of Burkeen. Burkeen gets taken into contact. Excellent work to come in and clean that one up. 
<clears throat> little handoff there, but doesn't get going. Gyru with a great tackle. <clears throat> Ball there goes into the hands of Brooklyn Duke. Nice line break here from the Lady Lions. Eventually taken down is Kira Granberry. The tackle looked like Gyrie there. Ball well, up into the hands of Brooklyn Duke again. Big break across. Looking at the 22. Bashes one player off. Looking around. Good little handoff there. Nice break coming around the outside. Good run here from Jaleo O'Neal. Excellent work to come in. Safe at the ruck. Looking for space, Victoria White into contact. Quick work of the Rucks here from this Columbia Central team in the second half. That'd be something they spotted as good work there from Workman. Workman, she was clearly looked at by that defense. They've talked about her at halftime, but she's across the line, just has to get the ball down and does. And that player, Kara Workman, the junior, gets a well-deserved try after a number of scintillating runs in the first half. Finally dots one down. Workmen working the defense here against a really strong Catholic Memorial side. One thing that's a really underrated skill that's leading to a lot of success here for the Lady Lions is their ball placement. A really fundamental skill that is often overlooked, but what they do really well is they get the long body and that makes it so that Catholic Memorial can't contest, but let's talk about this try. The cut off of the left foot, the right hand, and she commits two defenders to completely fold on each other because of her feet. Steps back inside, steps back outside, whips and weaves through, powers through those two defenders, continues to find the line. She's almost held up. It throws around like a rag doll, makes the try known. Conversion is up. Conversion looks like it's good. And now the Lady Lions for the first time are on top. Lady Lions have been good at first part of this half. We'll see what the benches look like in these teams, how the fatigue wears into this. Both have played a couple of shorter games yesterday. I was taking a look at it here. And it is just this beautiful balance running. The dummy runner comes in there, the quick handoff, the quick footwork. What a runner workman is. Just spots it and able to get through. Tremendous individual work, hard to bring down. And that is a big reward there. Mazurchek did everything she could, but the captain could not stop Workman. Ball down in here for the Lady Lions. Nice break up the middle. Future AIC player comes in, gets it back into her scrum half's hands. And nice breaks early in the second half for this Lady Lions team. What a show they're putting on, but ripped out of their hands. From Catholic Memorial, balls on the ground. It's going to come the other way after that good work inside their own half as Catholic Memorial will see what they can do with this one. Big hit coming in again. That's Lucy Wilson able to wriggle her way forward. Player from the Lady Lions digging her way over, and they draw the penalty. It's such good breakdown work defensively from the Lady Lions. We'll see what they decide to do. Yeah, we just talked about the ball placement and the importance of working the body on the ball. We saw... <laughs> That Catholic Memorial player just get really stuck underneath the breakdown, resulting in a not releasing penalty and a turnover in possession. This team is just working. That's Valeria Martinez offloads there. Player's going to need to roll away from Catholic Memorial and does. Ball is there for Harris. Harris has some runners. Dummy runner comes in again. Workman one more time. Ball in hand. Workman has to step back in. She's got some runners outside her, but she's got a try line in front of her. It offloads it. No one quite in particular, but we'll see if the line is there. Good handoff coming and try awarded. The Lady Lions touch it down again. Kinsey Burkeen, big country music fan, touches down here. In the Cottage Grove at the third place matchup in the Nationals. That uh, Lady Lion had her paws completely out. What a big fan there for Burkeen. That was just a valiant individual effort. It almost looked like the danger player, number 23, was going to be able to get away. We've been talking about her all day, Workman. Behind the back pass, they've been using them as a runner, but it looks like our try, try square was the one who ran that inside line. She comes around, opens up for the follow-through, pass goes over, but this is the importance of following your pass. You're part of the cleanup crew, but the paws are out. They're getting catty. The Lady Lions now are just dominating 
in the second half. The ball movement is accurate. We see Workman trying to work around the defense. She wants to get it to that last attacker. It goes over the top with the cleanup crew. She does such a good job. Cats do have nine lives. She gets one more, is able to dot it over. Lady Lions are on fire for this first, for the second half. That kick is not going to go, but what a try. You saw the smiles in the faces among all the Lady Lion players after that try. That just helped to, you know, with the fitness, with the momentum, getting some really fun rugby and having a good time. And it looks like this Lady Lions team starting to have a bit of fun. Cat Memorial need to get some points on the board to stem the tide here. Memorial to kick this one off, get us started again. Six minutes into the second half, they've had two tries scored on them. And that one's knocked forward, little coach killer there from Jalay O'Neill. So it's gonna be a scrum here for Cash Memorial, just inside the 22 of the Lady Lions. Good attacking opportunity, and they certainly love to get some points here. 12 points down. Yeah, the importance of really making sure that you get those kickoffs, especially after you just have two really hard tries. Catholic Memorial is not the type that you want to have ball in hand. We've seen their back line work it on the outside, so keep an eye out after the scrum. Ball in there from the captain, Mazurchek. Take a run off to the right-hand side through. Sorry, that's Audrey Frieda, the number eight position. All across, little tight defense here from the Lady Lions. Run back in towards it, do Cash Memorial. Back the other way, get the ball up in the hands of Ellie Hansen. Hansen taken down about 10 meters out. Ball up to Gairi. She has been everywhere. Lady Lions in trying to dig that one out. A good clear out from Cash Memorial. <laughs> All across, Wilson has it. Gives it out wide, spilled just a little bit there. Referee spots it. We're gonna come back for a penalty against the Lady Lions for being offside, so it's about seven meters out. Zerchek is gonna try to go on her own. She had huge numbers out wide there and some space. Might've been a little bit of an error here. Cut back in with a good run from Wilson. Is she gonna be held up? Is she gonna be able to get that one down? She does, and five points on the board for Catholic Memorial. Starting to close this gap. And it is a try for Catholic Memorial. We were just talking about how lethal they are with ball in hand, and they just showed that again today. We see here they take it to the line, but a big hit comes in. Beautiful by the Lady Lions. They move it to the left, but it's just cut back inside. We even see one get stopped, two get stopped. They almost get underneath the ball, underneath the body, but unfortunately it's not going to stop the try here. Referee deems it as a scorable. That's Cindy Pendowski, number 15 for Cash Memorial, gets that. That's 24 17 here. Kick to come to close the lead down just a little bit more. Well responded to there by this Catholic Memorial team. their time, Catholic Memorial. Every kicker has their own little rhythm here. And that one goes up and it is a good according to the assistant referees. So it'll be 24 to 19. A converted try would put them ahead for Catholic Memorial. But under 10 minutes going in this half, expect a lot more fireworks here. Going back to this beautiful try, the cut back inside the footwork. It is so impressive what these athletes are doing in order to manipulate defense solely with their body. It's important to use the whole body in order to break the defensive line and all teams are doing such a beautiful job here. Columbia with the fans cheering, get it going again. Ball hits the ground. Up the Missouri check, smart player. She moves it out to wink the wing. Nayira Gary, Gary is out there. 
the MVP of their fall season. Looking for some runners, looking to go maybe a little bit wide here at Catholic Memorial. I'm going to cross the face of it. Ball goes in behind. And Grace Bonnet gets hit there. Workman in trying to drive over this one. They're able to recycle it, but they've gone back inside their 22. Maddie Kozmoski. Martek picks that one up. Gairi again moves it out to the wing. They're across the 22 now. Flirting with their own touch line there on the side there. They're going to want to keep it in. Not give up possession here. Put the ball back again, and Kozmoski yet again, driven towards the sideline. <clears throat> Another run comes, little line break here, gaining some momentum through Frida. Oh, stolen away there from the Lady Lions, and a big run coming, and a big breakaway coming, and one person to beat. Little pass goes outside there. Workman's headed back towards the line. She cuts back across and spins. She's across. Workman touches down. Try awarded. Again, the Lady Lions have answered. Again, Workman raises her hand. And Workman touches down for another five points. The moment that Catholic Memorial finally get back in this game, the Lady Lions don't allow them any moments of celebration here because they find themselves back in the try line because of a turnover from this athlete right here. And then the pass off to Workman. Workman is going to look for that ball, especially when they're about five meters out from the try zone. We see them moving away from the pressure area, the cutback inside, away from the defense. She rotates back on the inside and touches it down with the hard slam and that's a two-hand downward pressure almost looks like it bobbled so hard that the Catholic Memorial player worked her hand in there but doesn't seem that way she made clearly made sure that one the kick is good puts him up another two points and well answered by the Columbia Central Lady Lions Catholic are up to the task absolutely see how this it goes Beautiful shot of the crowd here at the Girls High School Rugby National Tournament. Single school championship here in Cottage Grove, Wisconsin at the Madison United Rugby Complex. This one rolls back. Well taken this time by O'Neill. O'Neill gets across the 22. She's nearly in stride. She breaks through a couple. O'Neill, O'Neill breaks through about a fifth person here. O'Neill. Looking for something to offload to at this point. May just want to keep it, take it to the ground, but doesn't. And gets it off there to Valeria Martinez. Larry Martinez in contact. Going to take this one to the ground. Harris right on the spot. Keep the ball moving here for the Lady Lions. Looking for a pass out the back. Ball gets bobbled. Did it go forward or just come off the ground? Either way, it's in Catholic Memorial's hands. And back in their hands, picked up by Frida. She has been great around the breakdown in the second half. Harris talking to the referee, pleading for some kind of a call, but it's in Catholic Memorial's hands. Catholic Memorial gets to the 50 meter line. Catholic Memorial looking for the space. Get the ball to Marigold Fritz there. She's a second year player on the team. Sophomore at the high school, but players coming in illegally are the Lady Lions. The penalty here for Catholic Memorial, all in the hands of Alexander Mazurchek. She's gonna push this one downfield and look for the line out. A good position here for this Catholic Memorial team. Yeah, we see Mazurchuk taking her time and deciding to not do the quick tap. We can feel the anxiety and the anxiousness coming in. The crowd is loud. The Lady Lions are all gas, no breaks. So it's important to just kick the ball out, reset. You still have about 15 minutes left in this match. Still very achievable here, even though they are down by about 12 points. Ball coming in here from Catholic Memorial. Erie also puts the throws in here. Ball goes up over the top, back into the hands of the Lady Lions. Lady Lions take it away very quickly there from Harris. Moves it out. They are looking to pass it off there, but ripped out of her hand by Lucy Wilson. Where he's going to come back for the initial knockdown, it looks like. Victoria White nearly just handed that one away. We'll come back for the scrum. That was almost a textbook 
strip of the ball. It looked like she had taken her eyes off of it for one second. And in that split second, Catholic Memorial works in that space. They're showing that they're ball hungry and that they're aggressive, but this Lady Lions defense is just so impeccable and so hard in the contact. They're really gonna have to get mean as they enter into the last 15 minutes. Lady Lions ball here, ball once again in the safe hands of Alicia Harris. So Harris gets that one in, just coming in from Cass Memorial this time. Get a hold of that one. They're 22, they go. Stepping in, finding a couple of runners and finding Workman. Good work there from O'Neill to get it to Workman. Workman gets it to the outside this time. Has to come in and clean up. Great body position there. She does just that. Lady Lions looking for their runners, bring it back into the middle of the field. Run around the outside here. Hope she has some defenders with her. Defenders across from her, but she's got support runners. She's got it on her own. She's taking it across the 22. She's looking for the try zone. She's going to get to the try zone. She's going to get across. That's Kiana Edwards. A great solo run around the outside. Try awarded to the Lady Lions. Lady Lions, the pride, you can hear it on the broadcast. They've got a whole fan base. She ran completely around this defensive line. We see here just the step back inside and then the step back out. She dishes the fan. Mind you, we were just back at the 40 on the other half. Now we're crossing the other 40. We're crossing the 22. Absolutely outrunning this whole entire team, showing why she is a college recruit. What an opportunity here. There is only nothing but the come up for this player. And the Lady Lions are really seem like they are only looking to extend their lead over Catholic Memorial in this third and fourth place match. And they extend their lead through Keanu Edwards there. The Memorial time against them at the moment. lines this one up. That one just pushes across. We're going to be 36 to 19. Lady Lions looking good in this third place matchup. Remember, stay tuned after this. It is going to be everything to play for. Divine Savior, Holy Angels versus Rocky Mountain from Meridian, Ohio. Meridian, oh, Meridian Idaho. Sorry, it's been a long day. I'm mistaking my states, my states here, Darian. Meridian, Idaho is Rocky Mountain High School. Rocky Mountains are nowhere near Ohio. Ball up and over inside the 22 in the hands of a surging Lady Lions team. Good footwork again, swarming Catholic Memorial defenders. Runners coming off to this left-hand side. Workman again, Workman gets through two. She just finds that spot and goes. Workman across and bounces off. Pull back there for Catholic Memorial, eventually taken down near the Catholic Memorial 40 meter line. We get a distributor here and they find one. Through the AIC bounce to Taya Miller. Hole opens up in the middle of the field. Lady Lions, big hit comes in eventually, but no wrap in that tackle. So we're gonna come back for a penalty here. And Harris is gonna go quick. Harris looking for the runner, seeing where they wanna go. They move it out just off to this right hand side. Big break back in from Brooklyn Duke. She's been an effective runner every time she's gotten a hold of it today. Harris, one more time out the back. That's to O'Neill. O'Neill. Sucky running fullback there. Ball gets up to one of the try scorers. That's Burkeen. Now round off to Tanea Smith. Wider pass this time. In the hands of Miller. Some space in the middle of the field here if they can use it. Corinne Houston. Tackled by the Catholic Memorial defense. Catholic Memorial player just a little bit foolishly coming in there. So penalty against. Just can't reach around the ruck like that. We'll see what the Lady Lions decide to do. They're having some fun playing some great rugby out here. Would imagine they're going to take this one. Come on, come on. 
Uh, the ball around into the hands of the Lady Lions. Lady Lions on the move here. Have that runner outside, but it just bounces forward off the hands of Kira Granberry. Looking back here for a scrum to Catholic Memorial inside their own 22. Yeah, we're seeing Catholic Memorial kind of have hands on their knees. Uh, the Lady Lions have just been so fit in the second half. We saw a lot of back and forth play happening between the two sides, but the second half is always the determining factor when it comes down to who is going to win. Both teams have had to work a lot to get to this point, and now it's the culmination of it all, and Lady Lions are just absolutely slaying. Ball comes straight out. Referee's going to have them set it down again. Every moment this game gets uh, not ball not in play works in favor of the Lady Lions. Beautiful shot there too for the for the rugby broadcast. What an opportunity for these girls to come and play at the high school championship, having the ability to get on the board. It's like teams are getting a little tired here of scrumming. We're having a couple of scrum resets in order to make sure that everything's safe. Ball in here from Catholic Memorial. Big run coming straight up the middle. Good hit there from Mary Grace Bonet. Powerful runner, a little chip over the top. They spotted some space in behind. And Neil has to get back on this. She's got a couple of chasing runners. See the bounces for her. Takes a little bit of a wily bounce. She has to take it on the ground. Players have to let her play. He doesn't release it, so the be ball there. Quickly taken by Mazurchek. Mazurchek's gonna go around. Yara Davis, and she's going to touch down. Kath Memorial is certainly not done. None other than Mizerchek will get it down for a try for the team. The captain, she has been a massive effort on this side, just getting ready to go ahead and look for the kick chase. We saw the kick was executed well, proper placement. O'Neill had to turn around to try and regather. We saw a beautiful chase come in. They contested at the rough, were able to win the ball back, but Mazurchak, she looks up and she sees it. We see O'Neill, she gets completely turned around. She's trying to gather the ball. We see a body come in and make the tackle and it's that second attacker who comes in. She doesn't have to release, she's not a part of the tackle. We see Mazurchak look up, recognize that nobody's at home. She steps around, recognizes the mismatch between the hooker and a scrum half and that's just really good heads up play. It's the desperation in these games, especially whenever they're somewhat close, just important to continue your efforts. She's just an incredible player. She does it for the fans who are here as well, and a conversion still left to come for them. Conversion goes off there, 36-24. Yeah. Minutes on the game clock, maybe a little bit of referee's time. game here at this girls high school single school championships champion chip game to come up right after this we have seen some exciting rugby throughout the day certainly here as we have a 12 point game Columbia the Lady Lions want to hold on to it but the Memorial certainly have their own runners battle of wills the moment here and Catholic Memorial put some more points on the board and can they put them on the board quickly here Driving forward toward their own 40 meter line. Ball squirts out the back. Zerchek moves that one out, but first receiver has to just hang on to it. Ball across the front here. Spills forward there off of that attempted great line. Would have put that player through the defense. This can be a scrum here for the Lady Lions. As 
I'm one, of the most, one of the most beautiful things about that play was the communication that was happening down there. You can hear the Lady Lions that blatantly saying my hit they're calling their roles on defense it's making it so that catholic memorial just is very indecisive at the line it's leading to handling errors and it's giving them the ball back which is exactly what the lady lions want Lady Lions, that ball comes nearly directly out there. Referee, talks to the assistant referee, and they're going to hold that one up just a second here. Just looking like the fatigue is starting to creep in here. We're in the final four minutes of this match. There's been multiple scrums due to defensive pressure from both sides. Now we're having to kind of reset our scrums, ensure the safety, referees are on top of it, and the communication is on point. Big drive coming in from Calic Memorial, but they can't go that far, so it's gonna be a free kick here. And wasting no time is Harris. Harris sees a 22. Harris looking at the try line, now looking for a teammate. Got a Smith there, but they take that one into contact. O'Neal comes in, cleans that one up the end. O'Neal goes in a little shimmy roll there, a little handoff, comes back to C.R. Davis. C.R. Davis gets across one tackle. C.R. Davis gets herself to the ground. Good long body placement that Darian talked about earlier in the game. Makes the ball cleanly available. The ball comes up into the hands of Victoria White. Victoria White in a contact player has to release from Catholic Memorial here. Harris digs that one back out, looking a little wider this time. Get the ball in the hands of Granberry. Granberry has a couple players coming over there. Two minutes to go in the game clock. We will have a little bit of referees time here in this third place matchup. Ball coming out the back. Ball gets out into the hands of number 14, Smith. Yeah, Smith. Workman has to come over and set that ruck and does. Ball coming across. Good defense there from Kafka Morial. Can they turn this one over? Certainly working at it as Harris is digging this one out. Yet again, a little mispass out there. Into the ruck again they go. Cast Memorial digging that one out. Referee says that's free. Let's play, but it comes back into the hands of the Lady Lions. Lady Lions looking to the outside there. Casey Crawford can't find it. Just puts one up in the air and it knocks on a little bit. So we're going to have a scrum here for this Catholic Memorial team. As we're at one minute on the game clock, stadium clock, we have a referee's time to go. Make sure and stay with us. As we've been saying, it is Divine Savior Holy Angels versus Rocky Mountain from Meridian, Idaho. Coming up next on the Rugby Network in the championship matchup here at the high school girls single school championship. Also on Next Level Rugby. Off the back comes Catholic Memorial. Catholic Memorial, a big run out at midfield. Certainly not done. That is consistently every Friday. Ida, excuse me. Ball up in the hands of Ellie Hansen. Workman trying to drive that one off. Catholic Memorial at the 50 meter line. Penalty against them again. Another try, possibly coming Mazurchak headed towards the line. Mazurchak going to get him to 29 with kick to come. Good work there by the captain in scrum half. Yeah, Mazurchak, I don't know if her efforts will make it so that they win the game, but you can see Pats all around coming in because what an individual effort she has had this whole game. 
Her heads up playoff of those quick turnovers has been impeccable, and she leads from the front with her intelligent play. Catholic Memorial showed out continuously this game, and it shows that they we're in this game till the end with that last try. Conversion still to come. That might have been the last play of the game, but we see here just the heads up. She did it right in front of the sir. That's totally fair play. We see the Lady Lions extremely slow to recognize the penalty. Right here, coming in through the side, we heard the ferociousness that's instant. Referee says, okay, that's fine. Missouri Chuck, she knows exactly where to go, which is right with the try zone. She's just so fast. O'Neill comes across to try and make that, and she's just not able to. You see the crowd, they're all excited here. What a day provided to us for the high school rugby championships, all thanks to Next Level Rugby. We still have more action to come. And I'm thinking we might end this game with the conversion. Kick come here from Azurchek. Azurchek hits that one. Referee spotted. And referee whistles us for the end of this one. It is your third place champions, the Columbia Central Lady Lions. Take third place against Catholic Memorial High School, who's going to be in fourth place. Great matchup. Again, coming up on the Rugby Network and Next Level Rugby is going to be Divine Savior Holy Angels versus Rocky Mountain here, hosted by the beautiful Madison United Rugby Complex. We'll be back with the championship game in just a moment. Play with sticks, bats, or gloves. We don't wear shoulder pads or helmets. We keep playing when it hurts. And we leave everything on the field. What we wear must be built for our game. Kate Zachary, uh, member of the USA Women's National Team. 
as well as a current player over in England, uh, training with the Exeter Chiefs. Just want to take a moment and wish you all good luck this weekend in the national championships. It's a really exciting opportunity and I hope you all go really well and can raise the cup at the end of this. Um, just remember while you're out there, I think biggest piece of advice I try to keep in mind is the minute you step across those white lines, it's the same game you've been training for. It's the same game you've been playing week in and week out. So there's no extra pressure this weekend. Just go out there, trust your instinct, back yourself, smile a lot. And most importantly though, celebrate every moment with your teammates. Uh, it's a huge success. You've done an amazing job to get here. Now just enjoy yourselves. All the best. Hi everyone, I'm Elena Olson from the USA 7s team. And I just wanted to wish you all a huge good luck for this weekend. Um, I started playing in college, so it's really awesome seeing younger players get the opportunity to compete and express themselves. Um, so I hope you go out there this weekend with a lot of love and um, just give it everything you've got and win or lose, uh, find a way to grow as a player. Hey guys, my name is Sahir Hamden. I'm a, a member of the Life University Women's Rugby Team as well as the USA 15's national team. And I just wanted to wish you guys good luck this weekend. And I wanted to remind you guys to just be as present as you can be and take in the moment. You don't get a lot of opportunities like this. So good luck this weekend, have fun. What got you into rugby? So I was like fouling out in all my basketball games. So I was like, <laughs> why not try rugby out? In the hands of everybody. When we pick up the ball, we also pick up a legacy. A legacy that stretches beyond your current team. A legacy built on the backs of those who came before you with hard work. just outside of Madison, the beautiful capital of this beautiful state where the Madison United Rugby Facility is hosting the girls school, single school nationals, high school rugby national championship. We are about to see the final game. Divine Savior Holy Angels is going to take on Rocky Mountain from Idaho. John Broker here with Darian Lovelace bringing you this championship action. It's been great game so far, Darian. We should have a lot to look forward to in this one. It's been nothing short of a show for all of us. We've been seeing massive hits. We've been seeing physical rugby. However, one of the things that really differentiates the team and is something to take note of is intelligent play. We've seen all day these big hits that came in earlier. Bodies absolutely being tossed to ground, but it was the ability for players to look up and adapt. We saw massive funds, good ball movement, good work through the hands. And again, we just continuously are seeing the development of these athletes as they continue on through the weekend. They've had to work so hard to get to this point and they really are showcasing all of their strengths, all of their abilities. One thing to really keep an eye out for is the crowd that's here with us in Madison, Wisconsin. They are bringing the hype for these players and it's just really exciting to watch with the high school athletes, a lot of them now getting ready to finish out their career here. This will be one of their last tournaments they'll play in, but they'll continue on in college, really giving rugby the platform to continue to grow in the women's sport. It's really about ready to pop off, John. 
It certainly is. We've seen some great games. It was City Honors versus Granville. Granville took that for the seventh place match. Eagle beat Hamilton for the fifth place match. Eagle looking very strong there with some big hits. And then Columbia Central, the Lady Lions running rampant from all distances against Catholic Memorial. Bringing us up to this one, it is Divine Senior, Divine, excuse me, Divine Savior, Holy Angels. Coached by John Kin Klein and Rocky Mountain Rugby, coached by Chris Kovac. Great matchup coming. And one thing that I don't think can be stressed enough is how violent these women are getting. And we mean that in the best way possible. The physicality, the textbook tackles, the development of women's rugby is so real. And it's not even a matter of hitting like a girl. It's a matter of just hitting, period. These girls are absolutely clapping people down to the ground. We saw two towering runs here within woods absolute bodies everywhere but expect to see that in the final this has been the build-up that we've all been waiting for great game to come here as we said divine savior holy angels are going to take on rocky mountain high school from meridian idaho you can hear the fans are excited the sha divine savior is going to be in the reds like they will be kicking off as we're almost ready to go here. And in the purple and black is going to be a Rocky Mountain. 30-minute halves. Great rugby coming up. National championship on the line. Great players across the board here. This is going to be a fun one. We're just waiting for our referee to get us started. Making sure Rocky Mountain is good to go. Making sure... My savior is ready to go. And heat whistles are a national championship underway here. Rolls down and seems to be knocked on by Saigeni Young there. Nervy start here for Rocky Mountain. They will clean that up, I'm sure. First year player, just a little nerves. They'll be okay as SHA is going to have the first attacking opportunity here. You're always allowed one kickoff. Always allowed just one. Ball in here from Divine Savior. A little mix up the back there, but Melanie Sanchez gets a hold of that one. Gets a ball up there to Evie Kufo. Ball coming across here quickly, looking to the whiff. Players wrapping around. Nice ball work. Good ball. Henley gets a ball out to Tarnecki. Tarnecki into contact. Quickly recycled, looking to bring that ball out to the left-hand side. They have a couple of runners. Early break there, good balance run, looking great as Yesenia Morales. Morales takes the ball into contact. Rocky Mountain trying to contest there, but ball back across. Fast start here from Divine Savior. They're familiar with these games. Lots of great players in the history of the school. The ball comes out to the wing. Good tackle comes in on Ellie Gonzalez. Back across they come, little step, dummy runner coming in. Holding that defense back a little bit. Once again, Sanchez, the junior, takes that one down. And penalty there against Rocky Mountain. Just about 20 meters out from the line. Quickly they go, coming around the back. Looking for a runner out wide. Do they have one? Player's got some space. Can she get to the wing? She certainly can. It is Anna Byrne, a freshman. Touches down for a first try here for a divine savior. And everybody should be standing up for that try because that's one of the hardest skills to run through in rugby is just the simple line through the hands. We saw the tiny little skills come into play whenever they were working the draw and pass. Right here, we see it go through one hand. The dummy runner comes back inside, goes behind another decoy runner, moves it to the left hand, one more to beat. And then this is just the wing cracking the whip. She's patient, she stays on the outside, and that's just a well-deserved team try to start off this first half. I mean, when you wait out for good things to happen from your teammates, you've got nothing but time. That's just a very good, a patient run from the number 15 to get them on the board. The Holy Angels now really starting to lead from the front. Okay, come here from Evie Coffo. 
Not going to find it tomorrow, so it's 5 0. Divine Savior as we get this game underway. Just the beautiful draw pass. Again, that skill cannot be over analyzed enough here. The 2v1 is so crucial in rugby across the board. Having the ability to execute those skills is really going to pay off if they can continue to feed off of that. Ball inside the 22, but it's going to roll on a touch. I think it went off one of the Divine Savior players. The assistant referee didn't see that, so the ball is going to be for Divine Savior. Line out inside their own 22. Good pressure here from Rocky Mountain would do well. Rocky Mountain, especially whenever you're down in this end, this is really to go ahead and make your statement. Right here we see the ball just kind of end up behind the players, just not anticipating it very well. Result in a throw in though for the red team. A little wrap around there and Divine Savior on the move here. Put the ball to the boot. They're gonna move it out to the 50 meter line and more as it rolls backward for this Rocky Mountain team to run onto. Little step, looking for some space there. Gia Peterson. First year player retrieving that one. Penalty quickly comes in. Divine Savior penalty the breakdown there. Player putting their hands across. And kick is not going to find touch. Gonna to want to take a little more time about that one. Championship games, everything matters. It is Madison Tersinovich takes that one in. All across into Janie Retcher's hands from Menominee Falls, Wisconsin. Oh, a little dummy run back across. These inside runners have been doing a lot of good early on in this game for Divine Savior. Rocky Mountain hands over that one and draw another penalty. Good breakdown work, Darian. Extremely good Ooh. breakdown work coming in early. It doesn't look like they were able to get back 10, but still referee says play on. <laughs> referee had awarded the advantage there, but hadn't given the extra penalty for not 10. Player tapped it anyway, but play it stopped on a penalty. Rocky Mountain going to go a little quicker this time, taking the direct route. Got the ball to Reese Moody. Reese Moody, also a high school wrestler, gets that one on the ground. Ball coming across, big run off the side here, looking to keep that one tight. Divine Savior trying to disrupt. Have not had luck there. Have him back in the go. Krista Navy. We're in the number two jersey there. Ball comes out. Harchner, first year player, gets back and they put that one to the boot, but it may go directly in a touch. And it has. We're going to bring that back and be a line out here for Divine Savior just inside their own half. Very good thought coming from Rocky Mountain. There wasn't anybody behind the defensive line. That's a very smart and clever way to try and get the space. We see here she moves it to the right. Nobody's back behind the defense but it just goes way too far straight out. She doesn't get much distance on it, so it'll come back about 10 meters from where she kicked it from, but still it'll be a turnover. It's a very young Rocky Mountain team, a lot of freshmen and sophomores on the field here, so good opportunities for them. Players came across that line out, however, be a free kick here for Divine Savior Holy Angels. Quickly, they come across the 50 meter line, looking for some space, a big tackle comes in from Alyssa Hine. Need to work this right hand side, a little line back in. Good pick and go, that's Yesenia Morales. Player again in from Rocky Mountain, digging that one in quick. Great work of the breakdown by Rocky Mountain. They are looking for touch again and finds it this time. They need to slow that down a little bit, Darren, just make sure of that. Yeah, you just talked about how these are younger players and one of the things that we do when we're young is we try and rush the experience in these situations, especially when you get up towards the championship game, it's time to unlock the new skill of patience, allowing your time to develop and allowing your team to develop what they need to. Ball well, comes back to Paige Apkin. Apkin, a little clogged up in the middle of the field at our Rocky Mountain. Able to recycle that ball. They got players off the left hand side. Good run onto it from Libby McGuire, third year player from Meridian, Idaho, as most of these players are, all these players are. 
ball coming through here. Held up at the moment. A midfield mall going on here from Rocky Mountain. Gonna want to be careful if they lose that one. They lose possession of the ball. Have to get it towards the back there. They continue to drive forward. They have an advantage here, so good work so far. Free play, see what they decide to do with this. They're gonna break off of the back into another mall, but gonna go back here for the initial penalty. It's a Rocky Mountain ball. And they seem to want to go quick with this one. Maybe McGuire has a hold of it. Did we just see a teammates. rolling mall? We did see a midfield rolling mall. That is uh, not something you see too much these days, but certainly enjoyable for a purist. As the ball comes up there to Alyssa Hine. Hine into contact. There's a Reese Moody with her. Leaning over the ball they go, looking for some runners. Good take of the ball there, but defense up to the task. Meets him right at the game line, running some more runners directly in here to the heart of the divine savior offense, or defense, pardon me. Ball comes back across. Spilled back, but good to go. Allie Harris, however, fourth year player and captain. Senior has some defenders attacking her. Where they decide to go. This is two different styles of rugby here, a little tighter from this Rocky Mountain High School team. Big hits coming in. Able to recycle, but losing ground is Rocky Mountain. See where they decide to go with this one. Little show, thought about a couple of different things. Now they've got some room out wide, but they're going to keep it in tight. Good barreling run here from this Rocky Mountain offense. Gaining some ground. All their runners off to the left-hand side, so they're going to put a forward pot in. Able to fend off some defenders there. They move this one back in. Cypher. Player from Divine Savior tries to get in there, but knocks the ball on. Ball comes back to Archner. Another pick and go as they're looking at the 22-meter line of Divine Savior there. They're across the 22-meter line. They're looking for more. Big break coming up. That looks like Crystal Maybe, and Maybe's at the line. Maybe is over. Touchdown. Good try. Rocky Mountain High School gets on the board. Her last name might be Maybe, but there is no way that you can deny that try. What an individual effort. Maybe, not maybe, tomato, potato. But nonetheless, she still gets over for the first try for Rocky Mountain. But that was just a beautiful heads up play from her. Right here, we see the ball go straight to ground. The ruck looks good, but there's nobody to the right. There's nobody at home. It's so slow on the fold for the Holy Angels. We see the number 15 come across to try and make that hit. Number 13, she hits the post. Uses it almost as a bounce off. Uh, just continues to go through. That girl is tough. She just gets her team in for the four first try. Days. Of the exactly. <laughs> Allie Harris, the captain, right up in front. It's that one. It's two points to the good for them. Rocky Mountain Ruggy takes the lead here in this first half at the Girls High School Single School Championship. The championship matchup, everything to play for, and nothing to leave. Great try by Mavy. Not enough can be said about their toughness whenever they're going into contact, but as you start to get into these championship matches, a lot of times rugby turns into a chess match. We're seeing that here early on from both teams. Fine Savior spots some space back there. They get into the try score. She's headed across field and turns her way up. Well tackled by some Divine Savior players. Looking for the kick again. Allie Harris finds some green grass. It's rolling backwards, taking some strange bounces on this Cottage Grove turf. Trying to rip it away there. Great penalty drawn again. They've got some room here if they want to run. They're going to go for touch instead. If it rolls in, right now it's bouncing on the ground. It's back in Divine Savior hands. And just a rushed penalty there. Taking their time, they'd have a line out right now. Divine Savior, by their own 22. Happy to run. Tackle was almost high, but player took it down. Good work at the last moment there. Good defense ripping in here from Rocky Mountain High School. Breaking around the outside, Ellie Gonzalez. 
Runners the whiff here for Divine Savior. What a line break. Single player just playing tremendously there. Bounces off a couple of players. Still on the move here. Great run by Flannery O'Keefe. Flannery O'Keefe gets across the 22. Pick and go. Rocky Mountain High School working to get back on defense here. Good breakdown work by Divine Savior to get that one back. Michael's coming in from Rocky Mountain. Able to get their defensive shape back. Divine Savior with a good run here and some momentum. Need to pick up that head of steam once again. A little inside run. The runs have been very, very effective. Back to Melanie Sanchez. Sanchez says she once climbed a mountain in Alaska. Enjoying herself here in the national championship matchup. Looking for that wing again. Little step back in. Good work, but this time not going to find the try zone. White again is the first year player, Anna Byrne. Fullback wearing number 15. Ball comes up to Claire Foy. Boy, driven back towards the touchline, but still alive. Our divine savior getting inside to Greta Riemann. Riemann looking for the line. Across they come. A foul into the middle of the field. They've got some danger runners out here if they can get it, but a huge hit comes in from Libby McGuire. She's going to hold back these great runners for divine savior. Can they get the ball to the whip? That's the person who started it all, makes the connecting pass. Can she get it to the ground? Has done. Looks like a try for Ellie Gonzalez. And it is Ellie Gonzalez after a great series of plays. That's just down in the corner for Divine Savior as they retake the lead. We were just talking about how they had to work their way out of this end. That was almost an 80 meter try. All starting from back here. We see them move it through the hands. They're trying to move it to the left and she spots a tiny gap, the mismatch between the 12 and a prop. That's what they look for. The step back inside, the fend again. Get off of me. Continues to pump her legs through. She gets tackled. Get out of town, respectfully. Keeps on moving through, though. She's at the 22. And then the Holy Angels. She's praying for support. Finally finds it in her teammates. And then they've got a long amount of passage of play here from Rocky Mountain. Rocky Mountain do a good job of scrambling back on defense. They set their line and had to run multiple phases, but the Holy Angels stayed so strong and connected in their attack, it resulted in yet another try. I think he's not gonna make it, but they're back in the lead again. Take a look here through that same player, Flannery O'Keefe taking the ball across, makes that final pass. Good work there for Gonzalez to score off of. Great try, kick to come here. An exciting championship, as you would imagine. 10 to seven, three points in it here for Divine Savior. What's crazy is it doesn't even look like they're breathing heavy out there. <laughs> Not a low driving kick, it's back across the 22. Ball on the ground, always gives the defense a little bit of time. Big run coming from one of the Divine Savior players. Another inside run, Holton defenders are looking for Melanie Sanchez. They find her and she gets out near the 40 meter line. Good defensive work coming in from Rocky Mountain. Rocky Mountain turns this one over. They're gonna attack that breakdown defensively all day and finding a little space. That's Sagan Young, the first year player. Nice little break out the back. Paige Apkin takes that one. Here's Krista Mavy. Big break coming, and this is where they're strong. That is Mercedes Shellhouse. They keep pouring it on here. Nice little break around the side from Bryn Carter. And Bryn Carter making it to the line. She's getting hauled back by these defenders. If they want to keep it tight, they're going to keep working at it here. They are nearly bumped into one of her own. Good breakdown work coming. Trying to slow it down here is Divine Savior. Breaking off to the other side now. That's Bryn Carter. Bryn Carter gets the ball back inside into the hands of Allie Harris, the fly half. And captain, she's just going to settle things down a little bit here. White line fever across the team here. Everybody wants to be the person to score that try. If they can set something up with just a little bit of deceit here. As they go off to that right-hand side, big hit comes in on Shellhouse. Shellhouse at the five-meter line. Ball coming out. Where are they going to go with this one? Bryn Carter is going to pass that one across. The senior and captain moves it wide. 
There's nobody out there in support. She's going to wind her way around. She hands off a couple. Again, just working her way across that five meter line. Our Rocky Mountain, they've got to find the open space here. They've got some power runners in this side of the field. They get the ball up there to Reese Moody. Moody takes it down. Well handled. They're looking for just a little dart here. Archner taking that one. Another barrel at the line here, and they're over. Are they on the ground? Referee's right on the spot. And he's going to whistle that one. It looks like it was held up by Divine Savior. All that work, they will get the goal line drop out here. What a goal line stands, Darian. Well, if they weren't breathing heavy, they definitely are breathing heavy now. What a defensive stance coming in from the Holy Angels. They really stopped, held up very well against Rocky Mountain. And that kick doesn't work too well for Divine Saber. They're still down on their own five meter line. See where they decide to go. They have the runners coming in. Can they make the big break again? Through Melanie Sanchez. Sanchez and a key runner for this team when they need that space. Now they're going to go to the boot, but they're going to keep it in field. Players working back here for Rocky Mountain. Defender is on. One defender taken. Eventually down to the ground goes Gia Peterson. Players working back here for Rocky Mountain. A lot of defenders held on this side for Divine Savior. There may be some space out to the right-hand side. Rocky Mountain barrel away over this one. Archner gets that one to one of the waiting runners. And win the ball again here. Karchner again looking for the whiff. Ball just bounces in behind Bryn Carter. But picked up on the outside, maintaining possession, losing a little bit of territory here. Rocky Mountain High School. Across they come, the boot goes from Ali Harris. Ali Harris, ball gets knocked forward inside the 50 meter line by Divine Savior, winds up in a player's hand of their own team. So it's gonna be a penalty here for Rocky Mountain High School. Yeah, really seeming like the ball, just an awkward bobble is the only time that they stop. But a change, I think they might have heard you, John. Instead of electing to go ahead and push the pace and kick out of bounds, they now take the option for the scrum. Rocky Mountain showing that they're finally getting that blue head chill zen. The ability to make decisions whenever you're under pressure and you can hear the crowd, they're hype and they're ready. It's important to make those rational decisions for your team. Penalty against Divine Savior at the scrum there. Another opportunity here for Rocky Mountain. Referee just talking to the players a little bit, allowing them to understand what the scrum infraction was there. Here's the penalty, and Elise Moody has it, so she's just going to take it straight up. Second year player. And third in the States for wrestling in the open division. Playing rugby as well. Ball gets put forward there, but illegally done so by Divine Savior. Rocky Mountain getting the penalties going their way. They're going to go again through Moody. Moody is going to. Slow it down just a bit. Give it to her captain there and Allie Harris. Allie Harris hands that one over. We're going to come back and it seems like they've called for a scrum here. Try to isolate some players in that part of the field, get a little room for some of their runners. Yeah, not a bad decision there. We're still early on in this game, about 10 minutes to go in the first half, and it's only 10 to 7. Just a conversion or a try will completely turn the tables on this game. So electing to go ahead and take the scrum is a very smart decision. Now, whether or not they can execute the scrum is the more important part. Good push, Rocky. Here we go. Good push. Rocky Mountain, team putting the ball in from the tight head side here. Always find that to be a little unique. All in and quickly lost there to Divine Savior, but Rocky Mountain comes in and dives right over it, so they're going to get control of his ball one way or another. Ball taken off the back there by Kennedy Johnson into contact. Big collision. Rocky Mountain able to hold off on that one. This is somewhat of their preferred position down here sometimes, trying to make some tight breaks around the contact area. Divine Savior seem to have some hands creeping in there, but they're going to come back to that one for Rocky Mountain. That's Reese Moody. Reese Moody powers her way slowly up. The player's coming in from the side there, so Divine Savior will get out of jail on this one. Go, 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 go. 
and divine savior oh. successful in touch which is nice for them they finally want a moment to kind of breathe rocky mountain has just been absolutely pummeling them at the defensive line now they'll finally be able to go out on attack we see here just playing the ball on the ground coming in from the side for the clear out is what the referee saw unfortunately from them it's important to go in through the gate also gives you a more stable platform for the breakdown but now divine savior will have the chance to attack out from the 50. Divine Savior able to take that one down through Gonzalez. Driving their way forward through the mall here. Now they come off the back right at the 50 meter line. Look at some runners. They're gonna go to the boot, try to exploit some space. There is some green grass over there. Well, well taken down by Rocky Mountain, but they've got company. A penalty there for players coming in illegally. And quickly again go Rocky Mountain. Really unfortunate there for Divine Savior. That was a very smart kick, kicking it over to the far right side. They're showing that they really want to test the edge of that defense. But whenever you get in those situations where you see the ball and the runners isolated, it's so important to be more technical because you are the only person the referee is looking at. Losing your feet causes the turnover. Uh, over the top there, it's going to wind up in Divine. Savior Holy Angels hands with a 22. See what they can do. They have a good wide defense here, or offense, if they can get it going. Another penalty against Rocky Mountain for coming in from the side. They're going to go to Megan Walsh here. Megan Walsh moves it out behind the decoy runner. Shinovich, big collision in the middle of the field there. Is going to come back. Rocky Mountain High School away. Brave play there. Players just putting themselves in the way. Of any danger that comes towards them. Big hit from Divine Savior this time. Have to go with the pick and go through Karchner. Another pick and go. They're going to have to work this one back. At their own 22, a lot of room to go. And working that pick and go through Navy. Certainly happy to continue to do this. Sure, if this can take you the length of the field, so they may have to look at some other options. <clears throat> Another big break comes from them, but ripped right away into the hands of Greta Riemann. Riemann gets the ball down. The way they go, looking for an intercept there. Not happen. Big collision happens instead. The line saver has the ball, but they're breaking around the side here through Walsh. Walsh puts one wide. Well taken on the outside. They are off their feet there from Rocky Mountain. We're going back for another penalty. And this Rocky Mountain team, Darren, is going to have to be a little bit careful here. The penalties are starting to add up for them. Yeah, especially right now. Referee is really keeping an eye on there. I wouldn't be surprised if on the next infraction we have a conversation. Um, if they continue to go ahead and keep up this pattern, I'm sure that it will result in a card. But... We see here just the defensive pressure though coming in from uh, Rocky Mountain. They're really keeping an eye out for Sanchez because she is looking for that ball and the adaptability, the intelligence to go ahead and recognize that. But we see her go a little tit for tat. They try and shut her down and then she bumps off a player. What a contest here for rugby. Good ball taken down there by Gonzalez. They have a good driving ball. This divine savior, Holy Angels team, but it squirts out the back. They've got some runners here, so they decide to go with it. But for their outside center, Yesenia Morales. There's a race coming to the line. Ball may have been spilled forward there by O'Keefe. The referee says indeed it was. Hard luck there for Divine Savior. Three points in at 27 minutes gone. It's going to be a scrum inside their own zone for Rocky Mountain High School. Real hard luck for Divine Savior, but we've been talking about this launch coming from a Rocky Mountain. But right here, they get kind of almost beat, but it's the fact that she weasels her hand in between body and ball and just knocks it out for a knock on. But Rocky Mountain have a long time to get out of at this end. Rocky Mountain under pressure. They're going to get the penalty here. They're going to go quick. Rocky Mountain at their own 22. That's Bryn Carter. Bryn Carter hands it out. They've got it to the wing. Hit coming in. They haven't quite gotten their 22 now. Just worked back a little. Here they decide to go with this. With some of their power runners on the inside there. Moves that one quick. 
Todd waiting in the middle of the field. Nice little break across the 22 they go. That's Krista Maybe. She has been very tough driving forward today in this first half so far. And there is that midfield mall again. Fascinating as it may be sometimes. Effective as well, drawing in some attacking players. Karchner moves that one out. Karchner, another first year player on this team. As Divine Savior tries to get over that one, their players are in the deck just a bit there. So Rocky Mountain gonna be able to bring this one back. Rocky Mountain. Cross their 22 ball, ripped away by Divine Savior. Another opportunity off a broken field and a turn over here. Let's see what they can do with this as the ball comes out. A foul. Playmaker, another good covering tackle comes in from Rocky Mountain. Ball in play time, pretty impressive throughout this game. As Rocky Mountain drives a player towards the sideline. Back across they come. Through Walsh. From the middle field they go to Sanchez. Always making room. They've got a penalty advantage here at Due Divine Savior. And runners coming in the back. See what they can do with this one. Here is O'Keefe. We know what she's capable of. She moves it out to the wing there. She has one try already. Now she's got two. That's Anna Byrne with her second try. Great work from Divine Savior. They're going to push their lead. 15 to 7. Kick to come. Anna Burns, we can see the crowd absolutely on their feet. We haven't had a score for the last 15 minutes because of how evenly matched both sides are. But the freshman, Anna Burns, the number 15, is so patient out on that left-hand side. They move the ball so well. They have the whip and they have the accuracy. This is a skip pass over the top of the number 11, and she stays in the tram. We tell Wings to go ahead and be patient. Hold and wait for your play to develop. Wait for your picture, and Byrne does that so well. We see the contact here happening early with Sanchez, but Rocky Mountain's launch has just been impeccable. However, the launch doesn't matter if you've got ball movement like that. Divine Savior will most likely get the last answer here before we go into the half. Mm. From a tough angle, that one is not going to make it. It's 15 to 7 at the 30 minute mark here. And a referee has whistled us for halftime in this national championship matchup. It is Divine Savior Holy Angels 15, Rocky Mountain High School 7. A lot to play for in the second half. Stay with us. We'll be back with that action. play with sticks, bats, or gloves. We don't wear shoulder pads or helmets. We keep playing when it hurts. And we leave everything on the field. What we wear must be built for our game.
everyone. Kate Zachary, uh, member of the USA Women's National Team, as well as a current player over in England, uh, training with the Exeter Chiefs. Just want to take a moment and wish you all good luck this weekend in the national championships. It's a really exciting opportunity and I hope you all go really well and can raise the cup at the end of this. Um, just remember while you're out there and biggest piece of advice I try to keep in mind is the minute you step across those white lines, it's the same game you've been training for. It's the same game you've been playing week in and week out. So there's no extra pressure this weekend. Just go out there. What got you into rugby? So I was like fouling out in all my basketball games. So I was like, <laughs> why not try rugby out? In the hands of everybody. Welcome back to the Madison United Rugby Complex, the 2023 Rugby National Championship, Girls High School Single School Championship. 15 points on the board for this divine savior team. We're gonna look at the tries, Darian Lovelace. We've seen it time and time again. Rocky Mountain made their way into the try zone here early on with a beautiful heads up play. But one thing that cannot be said enough is the Holy Angels and their accuracy in their pass. They have such impeccable ball movement. Right here, we see the release coming from the hands. They do such a good job of timing the pass so well. Anna, Anna Burns is just continuously finding her way in the try zone because she's being patient and allowing play to develop. They're so skilled, John. What a match and such an, a scoreline that could easily change as we enter into the second half. And I'm John Broker here with Darian Lovelace for the second half. Kicking off was Rocky Mountain High School wearing the purple and black. And the red and white is Divine Savior Holy Angels. They are looking for their national championship of 2023 here. Both teams, a lot to play for. 15 to 7, a little more than one converted try in it for Rocky Mountain. We'll see if they have the power to do so. Do halftime changes could have been made here by John Klein. Chris Kovac, two great coaches at the helm of these programs. Rocky Mountain, first touches the ball here. Just need to get their runners out there and have done. Looking a little bit of width here. They've been powerful. A little bit of a tight game here on occasion. They've got some waiting forwards. Ball up there into the hands of Sagan Young. Young. The contact and recycles that one. Ball moves out in the middle of the field. Players just going to take that one backwards again. They're looking to set up this. We're looking to set up that midfield mall potentially, but they're going to go to the ground. The line, save your players thinking about going in there, but hold off. Allie Harris gets that one wide. They're nearly ripped away there by O'Keefe. Move around the back there from Moody. Moody keeps your feet. Moody has a player dragging her down by his shoelace at the end there. Divine savior player in the way, but not moving. Ball's gone back. Referee says that's fine. They're going to continue to play. Ball's in Paige Atkins' hands. Ball across here. Good pass out from Harris, but it goes in behind her intended player. Rolls in a touch. Be divine savior ball here. Good outcome really for them. Good. Very much a tit for tat here. The defensive efforts from both teams really being shown off here early. What a game where you can be a female athlete and be so ferocious, so physical, but also be super empowered to continue on that path. Line Savior, hold the player up, but not straight. It's going to be an opportunity here for Rocky Mountain. If they want another scrum or a line out, one would think the scrum is coming, and it is.
One thing to note, though, about the Holy Angels is they started off by using those forward pods and then moving it out wide, kind of doing the one-off runners and then having the two supporters. But now they're utilizing the inside pop. Those second-half conversations are really going to show how well teams can adapt after having those conversations and going in to perform yet again. Another ball stolen away there by Divine Savior Holy Angels. Big break up the midfield, and what acceleration. The run is on. That is Yesenia Morales headed towards the line, extending the lead. First points of the second half. Yesenia Morales, the senior, touches down for five. Morales absolutely boosted the morale for her team now, getting ready to go into the second half. We're not even three minutes in, and we've already got some points on the board for them. But again, it comes from the distribution, that dynamic distribution within the Divine Savior, Holy Angels. She's so patient and she's been one of the biggest ball carriers here. But right here, we see the ball movement. They finish so well in the release. She dishes the fend and then she straightens up after. She fills that void where the defender just was and continues to pump her legs through. Very questionable as to why Rocky Mountain doesn't have a full back back. It looks like she was over on the other side, just unable to compete with the speed of the ball movement coming from the Holy Angels, and she'll get another five points on the board with the conversion to come. Conversion is good. It takes them up another two points here. Good work early in the first half by Divine Savior to extend that lead. Important points here in a national championship matchup. Real cool common collected there. From That's really what Gonzales. these champions... It's really what these championship finals are all about is the fact that you have to maintain a cool, calm head, especially as you start to get tired in these matches. So the importance of really maintaining your skill when you're under pressure differentiates who takes home the hardware and who doesn't. Balls up to Sanchez. Sanchez has the attention of a Rocky Mountain High School player who ripped that one away. Takes the ball anyway, Bryn Carter. Bryn Carter gets the 22. Bryn Carter gets that one in a contact there. Looking to move it just a little bit wider here and play out there. Big barrel and run comes in from Mercedes Shellhouse, second year player. Back across they come. Looks like they decided to run their pods just a little bit wider. Probably intelligently, Paige Apkin takes that one in. The player's coming in illegally, so Divine Savior going to have that ball. Not players coming illegally, player not releasing under the attention of a divine savior, holy angels player. And they'll definitely look to kick and clear out of this end, just buy them some more time. Didn't exactly go the distance. It's about where she kicked it from, but we'll still allow time to kind of run out. 22 to seven, divine savior leave, leading over Rocky Mountain, but there's still a whole lot of game left to be played. Ball up, well taken by Ellie Gonzalez. Move that one back across. Player cuts back in, it goes to the boot. Just trying to find some space back there. John Chin Klein must have spotted this and gave his team a talk at halftime. Referee's going to bring that one up. Looks like it was a knock on. So, a great result here for Divine Savior. Rocky Mountain really not getting any breath of fresh air here. It just seems like the trends keep on not going in their favor. We see the scrum automatically going back to Divine Savior after Rocky Mountain only had a couple seconds of possession. If they want to get some points on the board, they're going to have to regain that possession from a very selfish Holy Angels attack. Ball comes up. Sanchez right up the back. Sanchez finds her way around one player and through a second. Players from Rocky Mountain digging their way in there, but Divine Savior able to hang on to this one. Ball coming out wide. It's into the hands of the try scorer and that great runner. We know what she can do as she fends off another one, gets them off her jersey. She's thinking about the try line, but eventually hauled down before it. They've got some players off to the left-hand side here. Megan Walsh has to dig. Megan Walsh gets up all a little wider. The ball gets in the hands of Flannery O'Keefe. She has been immense in this game, setting up some players and making a big line break. Ball comes across. Kinovich 
Gets the ball out, little cut run back in, may work this time. Rocky Mountain High School players just holding that one up again, coming back against the green, looking for the try line. Can't find it as Toby Dom. Now it's out to Sanchez. Sanchez gets a last gas pass away. Player coming back in at the try line and over. That is Mary Charnecki, the senior. Touches down for five points as Divine Savior maybe starting to pull away in this championship matchup. They are not allowing Rocky Mountain to have any type of possession here in the second half. Divine Savior basically keeping the ball completely in hand continuously. And it's because they're so clinical in their attack. You see Sanchez come in, she cuts back out, gets her body into a stable platform to pass. She cuts back in knowing that the defense is coming across and then just makes it right by the sticks. But not enough can be said about their tenacity when they've got the ball in hand. They're continuously looking to go forward. They're using their feet, using their bodies, and it's just making it so that it's easy for them to get down into the try zone. Rocky Mountain almost seemed to be giving away possession back to them, and that's just not what you want to do in this championship final. Kick to come here. Referees say that's good, and it's 29 to 7. Nine minutes gone in the second half. And again, we'll just see the try again. A divine savior. Really having these beautiful plays coming back in. But Rocky Mountain, even though the score line is pretty extensive, 29 to 7, they're still down. Again, this is the end of the season, end time for the play. Everybody here wants to play and is excited to be here. So it's just going to be a continued effort from both sides as we enter into the last 20 minutes of this match. Rocky Mountain goes along that one, but picked up near the try zone by Divine Savior player. She gets back out to the 22. Does Anna Byrne. Anna Byrne been on the try zone a couple of times. Now a little bit of defense. The kick seems to be the tactic here for Divine Savior in the second half. They want to play down this Rocky Mountain end of the field. Rocky Mountain out at the 40 meter line. Rocky Mountain defense closing in, having to head back the other way. Get the ball in the hands of Eve Ho. We're waiting forward, Pa. They're just inside their 40 meter line. Player not tackled, so he's able to look it up is Paige Apkin. Waiting player takes a line here, driving themselves forward, keeping that momentum going, looking at the 40 meter line. Now they're down to the ground. Divine Savior player is illegally in there. We're going to have a penalty. Taking it quick is going to be Bryn Carter. Bryn Carter is going to hold up. Give that ball to Allie Harris. Allie Harris in a fine touch with that one. The line out here for Rocky Mountain High School just outside the 40 meter line of Divine Savior. Yeah, the kicks from Divine Savior are definitely getting them a lot of go forward, almost making it so that they're completely out of this end. Back from where they were at in the 22, it's just really important. Possession and territory is what championship finals are about. So they're doing a really good job of managing this zone really well. Ball to the front there. They're going to go quick. Good work here by Rocky Mountain to make sure they secure the ball. Ball's up in the hands of Sagan Young. Sagan Young is going to continue to move forward here. Gets to the ground. Now they go a little wider to their fly half. Ball slipped back there, but they're going to go back. A penalty again against Divine Savior. Not rolling away there. Opportunity here for Rocky Mountain. And now it's time for yet another lineup for Rocky Mountain. It looks like Divine Saviors are starting to commit a lot more breakdown infractions and offsides call as they're starting to get really anxious on that line. All down for Rocky Mountain. Player holding the ball up in the air is Libby McGuire. I'm going to lower that just a little bit before it gets taken away, but taken to the ground across the 22 of Divine Savior as they go. 
driving forward, a little pick and go. This is the game that they prefer. Rocky Mountain staying in their tight. Divine Savior player over there, but not able to take that one back. Referee, you're right in good view there to make sure everything was legal around the breakdown. Now they look a little wider. Player with the ball up in that right hand. Able to get through a couple, working her way towards the try line. What an impressive run there. Coming from Alyssa Hine. Alyssa Hine, Buckeyes U16 player. Little pass out to the outside. Just bobbles, comes up into the hands of Divine Savior Holy Angels player there. Big drive over by Rocky Mountain. Ball still alive. Referee is saying, let's play. Everybody having fun at the moment. Taken in by Allie Harris. Allie Harris gets one of her teammates, the ever-ready Bryn Carter. Been all over the place. Penalty advantage here for Rocky Mountain. They've got an opportunity if they can't get this one in the try zone. We'll see what they decide to do. As Morgan Settler takes that one into contact. Off they come, looking for some space in the middle of the field. Little bounce off run there from Reese Moody. Reese Moody goes to the ground. They still have penalty advantage. There's some space opening up in the middle of the field as Shellhouse gets to that one. Now they've got some room out to the width if they can get there, but Karchner just hangs on to that one. I mean, straightforward they are into the attention of a lot of players. Even if they're held up, they should get this one, but over the line they go. See what the referee calls here. Player is not in the try zone. There it is, into the try zone. Referee is right there. Calling it held up. I thought it hit the ground. Good play, Divine Savior. We may go back to a penalty. We'll see what the referee decides to do here. Referee gets it out there quick. Alyssa Hine has it. Alyssa Hine is going to go quickly to the side. Alyssa Hine looking for a couple of teammates. Back in the same position as they were, but another penalty advantage here. Looking back to another penalty advantage. They're going to go quick. It's going to be Bryn Carter. Bryn Carter just wants that line. Bryn Carter gets over that line. Referee says no again. Call the Divine Savior captain over. We're probably just having a conversation about the breakdown infractions that we were just talking about earlier in the offsides call. They're really quick to get off of the line, but they're going to have to give an extra step. Looks like the server was telling their captain to make sure that everybody's on the same page. They continue to commit that. They might end up playing with the player down. Set play coming here from Rocky Mountain. Rocky Mountain five meters out. Just under 40, 15 minutes gone in the second half. Lots of points they need to make up. They're going to go a little wider with this one. That's in the hands of Bryn Carter, one of their usual targets. She can't get over this one. Now a penalty against. Good work, Divine Savior. Forcing a player from Rocky Mountain to come in from the side. So unfortunate for Rocky Mountain. They have ended up so many times down in this end. You can see everybody so excited and having a good time here in Madison, Wisconsin because of a beautiful defensive effort from both teams. But unfortunately, Rocky Mountain just not able to even get any points on the board here in the second half against the Holy Angels. All to the front for Divine Saver. They bring the one back around to Tersinovich. She goes into the distributor role on these players. That's the target they were looking for. Sanchez, the two as well. Marshall this time by the defense coming back across. Finding some of their strong runners working their way downfield. Ball squirts out the back there. Nice ball handling. Sets a player free. A tackle that wide is Ellie Gonzalez. Gonzalez, the winner of their sophomore limbo contest, now a senior. Puts that at a point of pride in the bio. Ball comes around there to Yesenia Morales. Off they go to the wing. Now they've got some space here, but a good covering tackle comes in from Rocky Mountain High School. Keeping the ball alive. They've got some attacking units across the field to see what they decide to do with it. They have to take it into contact first. Rocky Mountain High School working hard on defense here. 
Now the ball comes around the back, comes into the hands of Sanchez. Sanchez. Gets in the hit, but eventually lets that one go. Gets it in the hands of Ellie Gonzalez. A little break from Walsh here. Gets the ball out to one of her teammates, but it goes forward. So Rocky Mountain High School opportunity here. See what they decide to do this one. I have just has to keep that one in. Ali Harris. This time they go for the boot, put it in behind, is rolling towards the touchline, would settle things down, taking some unusual bounces back into the hands of one of the Rocky Mountain players. It goes, able to keep it in field. Good work of the breakdown from Rocky Mountain High School, able to keep this one alive. The captain, Harris, moves it forward a couple of steps and hands it off. Good runner and Alyssa Hine comes through there. He's playing those tropical sevens later this year. Is Hine. Forward power coming right up through the middle of the field for Young. Ball out the back again to Karchner. They got a forward pod waiting there. Nice work around. Reese Moody gets to the 40 meter line. Reese Moody to the ground. Ball away for Karchner again. Some space opens up. A player slips. She nearly gets through. But Hall to the ground eventually is Karchner. Able to get that ball back. Ball seemed to spill forward potentially off a hand there, but referee says it's okay. Brynn Carter in about her 600th carry of the game. Coming forward, she's been at a USA camp as a U18. Ball up into the hands of Shellhouse. Cross they come, waiting runners in the middle of the field. Big tackle comes in from Divine Savior on Reese Moody, but she's able to recycle that one. Good series of phases here, Shellhouse. To the ground again. Karchner goes a little bit wider with that one to the captain. Harris tries to slip inside. She's got a lot of defenders paying attention to her. They've got another advantage here inside the 22. Do Rocky Mountain High School with another infraction. The referee is going to whistle that one. The referee has not whistled that one. Everybody, including your commentary team, was fooled. As a player just started to walk away there, they still have a penalty advantage. Gonna go off to that opposite side. Player tackled a little further back, so now we'll come back to the penalty. Rocky Mountain just having a couple of conversations here. Looks like Harris was down for a minute, but they're gonna go ahead and look for points. There's only about 10 minutes left in this half. Very interesting tactic. We see here the camaraderie. One of the most beautiful things about women's rugby is the fact that in our culture, you beat each other up on the field and then you empower each other to continue on through the fight, through the ugly. Unfortunately for them, it just might be that they have caught an absolutely beat up by the divine saviors looking to just get some points on the board. They haven't scored at all the second half. So Harris taking it upon herself looks to try and slot some in between the sticks. <laughs> Harris to kick this one. And Harris finds that one. Three points for her team. You see some Rocky Mountain High School fans celebrating those three points 10 minutes to go a lot of points on the board for them to recover they're within 19 big hill to climb applause is definitely warranted both efforts of these teams are being showcased here today all thanks to next level rugby we're here for the girls high school rugby national tournament you tuned in for the last 10 minutes of this match it's the final, and they've only got a little bit to go, but this match has been nothing short of physical and brutal. What a great day of rugby we've had here in this final 10 minutes. We'll show ball comes up to Rocky Mountain. They have to take that ball, taken in by Libby McGuire. Goes to Renaissance High School Meridian, a charter school, able to play at Meridian at Rocky Mountain High School. Ball coming across here. Runner coming in, looking to go a little wider there. Nice move here. Floats over the top. 
Player gets a hand on it. She turns around the corner. Gia Peterson. Gia Peterson gets hauled in a touch there. Big hit coming in. That is Toby Dom. Great player. Dom absolutely dominating in that tackle. She's a little slow to get up. The number 14 barely misses her by the ankle. She just comes across. Unfortunately, Rocky Mountain just gets caught extremely flat-footed. It makes it very easy to go ahead and just tumble right on out of bounds. Looks like she's up and moving. Beautiful play by her. But it looks like it'll probably be a divine savior line out. Rocky Mountain tears that one away. I have to try to take this ball back. Divine savior trying to get into that one, but good work at that line out from Rocky Mountain to maintain a hold of that ball. Allie Harris is not done yet. Allie Harris hands that ball off. Divine savior player is coming in over it. Looks like a player lost their feet. Referee's happy to let everybody keep playing here. Ball to the ground from Krista Mavey. Ball coming out to the side there. Harris it's just in behind Hines, so she can't make the kind of run she would like to, but able to gain some ground nonetheless. Harris has to come in. We've got a penalty advantage here again against Divine Savior. Good run coming there from Paige Apkin in the junior. Rocky Mountain High School. Good break here. They are certainly not done. And it's the powerful Reese Moody. Reese Moody working her way towards the line. They're about 15 meters out. Nice break from Brent Carter. Back to Harris. Harris has a dummy runner coming in. Gets a second runner. Finds Hine. Hine gets taken down by Divine Savior. Which way they decide to go with this one. Karchner. The player off to Katie Shaw. Katie Shaw. The first year player on this team. Ball again out to Moody. Moody. Gets that ball up. Ball coming out to the width here. Libby McGuire. Ball up to Moody again. Moody certainly featuring in the later stages of this game with these powerful runs. Divine Savior trying to take this one away. Ball squirts out the side. Referee says it's pretty free, but blows his whistle eventually. We're going to penalty this time against Rocky Mountain High School for hands in the ruck. Good work, Divine Savior. Absolute heartbreak, though, for Rocky Mountain. You can hear the crowd cheering for them. They're cheering for themselves, constantly trying to break the door down against Divine Savior down in this end. They played almost 12 phases. But the defensive line down there simply just pushed them side to side, caused the error. Defense really does win championships continuously, and Divine Savior is just playing impeccable defense. Rocky Mountain is just not able to come up with an answer. Four and a half minutes in the game clock. We may have some referees time here out at Madison United. You see their executive director, Brad Dufek, in the background there, running this great complex. Divine Savior may have lost that one. No, it comes back their way. Tristinovich. Again, the territory game. Ball bounces high. Back onto it is Gia Peterson. Gia Peterson. With the ball, the waiting teammate. They have a long way to go to Rocky Mountain. They get it just after their 23 through Krista Mavy. Looking for a forward pie to bring him across the 22 and have found it. Another nice break there from Bryn Carter, but ball slips forward. Referee may not have spotted it. it has spotted a penalty as a player is playing on the ground, so it's going to be divine save your ball. See what they decide to do this one. Ball is quickly into Walsh's hands, the junior scrum half. They're going to go for post, try to take some time off here, Darian, and it's really starting to wind down. 
Yeah, especially whenever you kind of are getting to this sweet spot. It's a very achievable kick. It's right in front of the post. Buy your team some time. Divine Savior have just been putting on an absolute performance, and their defensive effort is most definitely paying off. Rocky Mountain not doing themselves any favors down here in the sun by committing those penalties. And it just leads to Divine Savior extending their lead even further as we wait for a kick to come. We hit the three minute mark to go on the clock. Divine Savior is setting up this kick. The foul has directed well from the fly half position. Now puts the points on the board. The three points takes them to 32 to 10. That is definitely that for a national championship game here. Great game by Rocky Mountain. Just a couple of minutes to go. We certainly have some players that are in the never say die. Krista Mavy, Bryn Carter, Reese Moody, Ali Harris, Alyssa Hein. And tremendous players out there for them today. A long kick from Rocky Mountain High School. Back in the hands of Flannery O'Keefe, who's been an important part of this machine for a divine savior. And your retcher takes that one in with a penalty against Rocky Mountain High School. Players not rolling away there. And no surprise, they'll look to go ahead and slow it down, a kick for touch. Make sure that it make, walks out. Take your time getting to the line out. We're starting to see the mental game of rugby really show out here as we enter into these last couple minutes. Every decision that we make is important due to the fact that it's about territory and space. And Divine Savior have just done an impeccable job with game management. Players just holding up a second here. Maybe a change coming in. A couple of players coming in for the final moments here. For the line savior. We're at the one minute mark on the game clock. There may be a little bit of referee's time here. The line savior is trying to get some players in the field. Ball up in on the hands of Ellie Gonzalez. Go back to the middle of the field. Good run from Melanie Sanchez. That midfield has been owned by her today. The ball comes up in the hands of Bryn Carter. Bryn Carter at the 40 meter line there, holds the ball up just in time for a team to get into their right positions. And again, they go straight up the middle of the field through Reese Moody. Reese Moody takes two or three to tackle her. Ball back to Harris. Harris kicks it, but it's blocked quickly by this Divine Savior team. Divine Savior, 25 seconds on the game clock. Uh, coming across here again to the wing but knocked forward by Divine Savior the referee didn't spot it it was off the leg so they're going to get it back coming to a runner coming into the midfield again through Sanchez Sanchez junior on this program now they look to get the ball wide do Divine Savior good defensive effort to the death here by this Rocky Mountain team. We are over 60 minutes, so we're officially in a referee's time here. See how much extra time he may add on. The ball comes to Trixie Setliff to take that one in. The ball moves around the back, gets back into the hands of one of their reserve players. Out to the wing they go, looking wide. Get the ball out in people's hands is Ellie Gonzalez. Referee spots that. And we do have a little time left here, at least time for another play. The referee looks at his watch, but awards a scrum to 
Rocky Mountain High School. Probably entering into the last play or around that. We see here these beautiful pictures of the team in red, the Divine Savior, Holy Angels, Rocky Mountain in the purple. They did such a brilliant job. Both teams putting on a valiant effort. Listen to the crowd. They love it. They've been here from the start since 8.30 this morning, and we've just been watching Champagne Rugby. Free kick here to the Rocky Mountain team. One more opportunity for them. Britton Carter has the ball in hand, and Britton Carter just wants to play. At the 50-meter line they are. That's Reese Moody. Reese Moody needs to drive forward with Bryn Carter latched on there. Falls in, Divine Savior trying to come in over that one. Rocky Mountain High School trying to dig that one away. Referee spots it and back up into the hands of Rocky Mountain High School. Players from Divine Savior just piling in and over. But Rocky Mountain High School looking to have the final say here. Move it off into the middle of the field. Player running back in there is Alyssa Hine. Alyssa Hine. Comes in over Karchner again, moves it out in the middle of the field. They've got some runners wide here. If they can move the ball, they're going to hang on to it. Ball comes in at the feet of Krista Maybe. Krista Maybe hands off one, cannot find the corner. In and over she goes. They're looking for some runners here. The ball goes to Disbrow. Disbrow, first year player. And in and looking for it again is Bryn Carter. Bryn Carter all down that time. The Divine Savior players in and over the ball. They ripped that one away. They picked that one in touch. A referee looks at his watch. And a referee whistles the end of our match. And Divine Savior, Holy Angels, are your 2023 single school high school champion for the girls division. Great game. Darian, what a day of rugby. Just in a beautiful day of rugby. And that might even be an understatement. What a performance done by our champion, the Divine Savior, Holy Angels. But it was the buildup from all three matches that happened before. We see the crowd. People watch women's rugby and they care about it as well. We see people standing up here, enjoying the moment, enjoying the weather. What a beautiful day of rugby. We saw just an amazing performance by all teammates in all divisions. Just a continued effort for everybody. Everyone enjoyed the day's worth of rugby. I know for a fact that we certainly did. And that is going to be that for us. You see Divine Savior, Holy Angels. To be collecting the trophy in just a bit, shaking hands with these teams. Congratulations to them, your 2023 national champions. What a phenomenal matchup this has been. And as we roll out, we'll take a look at some of the highlights here. A big thank you to Madison United Rugby Complex and Brad Dufek, all the staff and volunteers doing some great work. Thank you to our referees teams who have been tremendous throughout the day, keeping the game moving and officiating so well. Thank you so much to USA Rugby, USA High School Rugby for all of their work as we're looking at these national champions again. Thank you to our next level rugby crew, our cameramen, our technical people, Ryan, the man with the rugby plan, Ginty directing and keeping everything going here. For Darian Lovelace, I am John Broker. Congratulations to Divine Saver, Holy Angels. We'll see you at the next championship.
Here we have Rocky Mountain High School receiving their second place trophy. Well deserved. You see Divine Savior ready to get their championship trophy. There they are, your 2023 National Championship Divine Savior Holy Angels. The parents and fans in the stands there. The Milwaukee Bay's team will be your championship for 2023. That is it for us here at the Madison United Rugby Complex. We'll run through our goodbyes yet one more time. Madison United, United Rugby Complex, thank you, Brad Dufek, all staff and volunteers of this wonderful, wonderful rugby venue in Cottage Grove, Wisconsin. Thank you to our referees for keeping the games fair and officiated today, the whole referee staff. And for Next Level Rugby, we want to thank all of our cameraman and technical people, as well as Ryan, the man with the rugby plan, Gippy, Darian Lovelace, I'm John Broker. We'll see you at the next rugby game.